the Bucknell Bison Band with our national anthem. And when we have an opportunity here to be able to see some of the stars that we'll be focusing on for both Sacred Heart and Bucknell as the Bison will be in the road blue uniforms today. It'll be all blue for the Bison, the blue helmets, blue shirts or jerseys and blue football pants and Sacred Heart in the all white. So uh, you have both of them here as Sacred Heart has the white helmets, the white jerseys and the white pants. That is a contrast. If there ever was a definition of contrast, there you go. No doubt You'll about You'll be it. able to see the difference between the two teams. By the way, Sacred Heart did win the toss. They elected to defer. So Bucknell will get the ball to start the first half. As Bucknell team will be receiving the kick, you see Brian Marine and Stephon Moore Green wearing number six. As your if you're watching on the Patriot League Network and Bison Vision and Sacred Heart Pioneer quarterback Kevin Duke certainly led the Pioneers to a very impressive win at another Patriot League team, Lafayette College, a couple of games ago. Kevin Duke also loves handing the ball off to O.C. Emio Perea, and Emio Perea has almost 200 yards rushing in just three, three games. Well, one of the things, too, that Duke's a, a, a danger with is he's a danger to run the football as well as throw the football. So they're going to have to contain him in the pocket, and this is going to be key with the linebacking crew. And so what we talked about earlier, the linebackers here for Bucknell are really going to have to be disciplined because he can get out on the edge and make some things happen. And, you know, they protect him very well here at Sacred Heart. Quarterbacks don't get sacked very often here. It'll be Ryan O'Dowd to kick this one left to right. And Bucknell as the shadows start lengthening over the Bucknell end of the field. The south end, they'll have uh, green and also marine to return the kick. Game time temperature, 88 degrees and probably about 110 on the turf. And the humidity makes it feel like it's in the 90s. O'Dowd boots this ball deep. And ladies and gentlemen, it's game time on the Bison Sports Network. Green takes it up the far sideline to the 10, cuts it back to the 15, breaks a tackle at the 18, fights to the 25, and then is going to be twisted down at the Bucknell 30-yard line, is coming up to make the stop for this Sacred Heart kick coverage team. It was a backup tight end, RJ Trimble Edwards. So good field position for the Bison. Bucknell will start its first possession at the Bison 30. What I like about Green is he's very upset if he doesn't return it for a touchdown. He gets very frustrated. Even if there's no seam there, he feels every time he touches the ball, it should be six points. That's what you want in a returner. And what you want in a quarterback is the sophomore, John Chia Rolanzio. He'll be getting his first start this year. He started against Fordham in the game number 11 last year. Have a full house backfield, backs to his left and to his right. It'll be a shotgun snap, handoff to Chad. Look like Fresh Knock up the middle, and Fresh Knock against a really good Sacred Heart defense gains nothing. It'll be second and 10. When you talk defense, we have two teams that definitely know how to play it. Maris, excuse me. This team, Sacred Hearts defense, is ranked 15th in the U.S., has recorded a sack in six great games. And meanwhile, Bucknell's defense leads the Patriot League at 249 per game, ninth in all FCS football. Polanski there, 97. He's a fifth-year senior. They list him at 295. I think that's conservative. He is a big defensive tackle to move around. Did give Fresh Knock a yard. Chia Rolanzi will fake a handoff. They'll throw it out of backfield to Chad. He'll reach the ball out, and I think he may be close for a first down as he will stretch it over the 40-yard line in that far side of the field. So first and 10 orange and blue, and Chad Fresh Knock has his second completed reception here this year. You know, that play has to come through where the running back has to get through clean. He can't be chipped, and he got, actually goes off the right side after the play fake, finds the little seam, finds a little soft spot, and she finds him for the first down. Ball on the right ash, Marcus Bucknell moves right to left towards the open end of Christie. Marcus Adam Alola getting the start for Andrew Hours in motion. It'll be a handoff to Joey DeFloria, and boy, he runs into a white brick wall as that was led in there by the linebacker uh, Kevin Berry, the R redshirt senior from River Edge, New Jersey. He has 20 tackles now, and he'll stop DeFloria for a half-yard gain, second and nine. Right now, the Pioneers are just loading up the box. They've got eight, nine guys in the box saying, you are not going to run the ball through us, especially on first down. We'll see if the play fake gets into the play here as we get through in the second and third series. This is second and long for Bucknell. Ball at the Bison 40, moving right to left. Chia Rolanzio in the shotgun, throws a dart, and it's going to be oh. caught by Adam Alola, and he'll take a heavy hit, but he'll hold on to it. He had four catches last week, 
against William and Mary. He'll grab this for five yards, and he took a beating by Kamal Whitaker, the redshirt senior left cornerback with his 10th tackle. Man, what a hit. You know, this is a stellar hit and a clean hit, and then pops right up with the football. That did not hurt. You gave me your best shot. I took it. You get back to the huddle. Please don't hang me out to dry like that again because <laughs> <laughs> that really hurt. You never let the guy know it hurt. <laughs> Third and five here as Bucknell will drift. Adam Alola out to a slot right along with Jack Coran. There'll also be two wide outs, including Butler. And it looks like Kinner to the left. Third and five. It'll be a blitz. Chirolanzio throws. It's caught by Butler, and he'll have a first down into Sacred Heart territory. He'll stumble his way to the 48, and it'll be first and 10 Bison. Second first down of this drive, which now has elapsed two minutes, and no score between the Bison and the Pioneers. What I like is Chi knows the pressure's coming from his right side, being a right-handed, knows the blow is coming, and doesn't force the ball. That's one of the adjustments I think he's made from spring to fall, is he's not forcing it as much. Now Chi is under center. Be a pitch out to the right or wide side to the Florian. Good speed by the Sacred Heart defense. Coming up to wrap him up for a about a yard gain is Tim Johnson, the redshirt senior from Lexington, Massachusetts. That's one thing that has become kind of a commonplace this year. When you call a tackler's name for the Sacred Heart defense, you're going to say redshirt senior. Yeah, there's a. <laughs> this might be the most redshirted team in college football at any level. There's a lot of guys that have been here multiple years. No gain between on that play. He might have been here longer than Pugliels has been playing football. Most likely. <laughs> so it'll be second and 10. Bison at the Sacred Art 48. No score first quarter. Chiralanzi in the shotgun. Rolls to his left. Throws it out of the backfield. Here's to Floria. He'll come up to the line sideline and get knocked out of bounds. Very close to a late flag. No flag is down, but DeFlory will take it inside the 40 down to the 38 and a half yard line before being blasted out of bounds. That will be... I guess up first it's oh, yeah. Bison. I love this pass play. Rolls out a little bit after rotating actually the opposite way. So it looks like it's going to be a rollout to the right. He actually spins the opposite way you would to hand the ball off. But there's nobody there to hand the ball off anyway. The defensive end actually, or the linebacker actually freezes a little bit. And then DeFlorio is able to get open. So it's first and 10 Bison at the Sacred Heart 38. No score first quarter. Bucknell in an offset eye now. Play action. G has some time. Goes deep. Man is open down in the end zone. It's a ran. It's going to be incomplete. But no, I think he got it. Everywhere. Oh, he caught it. Touchdown. You are Bucknell Bison. Oh, my almighty Kevin. You're right. Somehow, even though he was penalized by being grabbed, he was able to hold on in the end zone, and Bucknell has a 6 nothing lead. He is no longer a quarterback. He is officially a wide receiver with that catch. That was one heck of a catch. Great play action. Draws the linebackers and the safeties in. He runs right by everybody. He's about four steps ahead. The safety's got to dive and tackle him, and somehow Haran just reaches out and pulls it in for the touchdown. That is now officially a wide receiver play. You are not a former quarterback. You're a wide receiver all time now. That may be one of the best catches I've ever seen a Bucknell receiver make. Hey, listen, if you're going to interfere with somebody, you better make sure he doesn't catch the ball because you're giving up 15 yards. That's better than giving up a touchdown. That's why you can you, you get pass interference there. What a heck of a catch. And what a great throw by Chi. It was right on the money. Here comes Bucknell's John Burdick. He is only three of five on extra points. Had one block last week. Low snap, but he has a lot of time, and he'll slice it through the upright good. And Bucknell is going to have an eight-play drive that is going to take 70 yards, and, of course, the last 38 was that great throw and catch. John Chiarolanzio with his first touchdown this year, and, of course, it goes to Jack Aran with his first touchdown reception. We have a 7-0 Bison lead. First offensive drive goes the way of the Bison. Sacred Heart will get their chance in a moment. 10.45 left in the first period, and it's the Bison 7 and the Pioneers nothing. Eight plays, 70 yards, and John Chiarolanzio with his second career touchdown. This one to Jack Aran, his third career touchdown reception, and the Bison now take with the John Burdick extra point a 7 to nothing lead. And here comes Bucknell's Ethan Torres. He's back after missing last week against William & Mary. It's good to have Ethan back booting the ball. And let's see who the uh, Pioneers will drift back to receive the punt. Should be Emil Perea and Meacham. And boy, both those guys can fly. And after this kickoff, Kevin has a word or two about how this Bison offense was able to score on that drive. Torres boots it deep. And getting under it is going to be 
OC. He'll take it at the five, to the 15, to the 20. There is a penalty flag down. He will run to the near side and be upended. So he'll cross the 24 to the Sacred Heart 25 yard line. John Fox on the coverage that time. And actually, I don't think that was OC on there. I think that was instead uh, Ezekiel Enos on that return. And there is a penalty flag. So I think this might this, this actually might be a block in the back, although it happened out in front of the run, which is really unusual. Our That's referee why I'm not today, sure. Jeffrey <laughs> Jinsuski. That's well, interesting. That's a huge penalty. Yeah. yeah. Not sure what he did, but that was the guy who got a Bad block earlier, R.J. Trimble Edwards. Yeah, it was it was in a weird spot, too. It was well in front of the running play, or well in front of the runner. You know, that last, we talked about that big pass play. That was set up by the fact that Bucknell was running the ball on first down, running the ball on first down, and they were overloading the box. Eight, nine guys in the box. The safeties bit on the play fake, and Haran just ran right by him. So well-designed series in that whole sequence. Kevin Duke is the quarterback. He's going to hand off, and here is a big break for Meacham. He's going to get tripped up after running for about 15 to the 30-yard line. Actually, 18 as the line of scrimmage was the 13-yard line. And, boy, that was a quick hitter up the middle for a first and 10 sacred heart. Well, that was an example of the door not getting closed because there was a nice hole off the left side, and he just shot through it quicker than anybody thought he had the ball. Here comes another play action. Duke throws it out on a screen to the far side and being swarmed and dropped as in us as Holland Johnov. Good to have him back from that knee injury that made him miss all of 2016. Grabs him for no gain. It'll be second and 10. You see what Sacred Heart's trying to do. No huddle. They're spreading the Bison defense out. Well, this no huddle is great as long as you're getting first downs, but the no huddle can make the game really, really short for you if you're not getting a first down. Under 10 minutes left first period. Bucknell up by a touchdown. Duke to throw. He'll throw it off to to the far side, it's going to be incomplete. Trying to hit a uh, leaping Barney. There is a penalty flag in the backfield, and we'll have to wait and see who this is going to be on. Once again, looks like it'll be a hold. Yeah, it's one. definitely a hold. Uh, and, and if it wasn't, it was going to be a sack. I'll give you a center, Brad Tiernan. I'll give you a guess who we matched up against. I'm going to say Abdullah Anderson, All American. <laughs> yes, that would be the answer. <laughs> so that's going to be the second penalty on this drive, the first on the kickoff. Yeah, that was exactly what happened. And if he didn't hold, it was going to be a big time hit. That'll move the ball back to the 20. And it'll be first, second and 20 for Sacred Heart, trailing by a touchdown. Here's a pitch out. Bob Bold caught by Meacham, and he fumbles the ball. It's loose, and Bucknell dives on it, and it should be first and 10 Bison as Ben Richard comes up with the loose ball. That looked like a bad play from the get-go, and Meacham, to add insult literally to injury for Sacred Heart, is down, writhing in pain, where he fumbled the ball at the 20. I and I see Joe Souza telling Ben Richard, scoop it and score, but he, I think he did the best thing, fall on the ball. It's one of those things that if, if you don't, if you scoop it and you don't get the scoop, you wished you had fallen on the ball. But I, I think he cramped up. I actually, because when he came around the corner, he was bobbling the ball, and all of a sudden he just kind of pops a little bit and stops right before the hit. He was having trouble getting a hold of the ball, got it tucked away. Then he cramps up, and, the, and it just pops out of his hand right about the time he was going down. Couldn't see who got the uh, forced fumble there, but Bucknell, this is what happened for Sacred Heart last week against Stony Brook. It was special teams blunders, had a punt blocked in the end zone against Stony Brook, and then the punter went down on a knee at the Sacred Heart 38. So let's see who hit him. I think it's Zarkowski. No, it was Trevor Finnamore yeah, forced Finnamore fumble, the fumble, and the ball is going to be inside the 20, and they are helping the running back meet him up, and he's getting a nice round of applause from a good group. Really a nice crowd tonight on the part of the Sacred Heart Pioneers coming from Connecticut and parts there about, although there are a lot of Maryland and New Jersey players. You know, there's that's only their second uh, fumble on the season, The actually the second lost fumble on the season, third overall. And spot the ball at the Sacred Heart 16. Now, I know what Coach Susan was wanting to say. Hey, if we can get another defensive score like against Marist, that would have really helped. But Buckdale will still have great field position at the Pioneer 16, leading it by seven. 
9.44 left after the fumble by Meacham. Be a delay handoff, cutting it back against the grain. It's going to be Bucknell's running back, Joey DeFloria, took it off to the right side and then is going to be wrapped up and bringing him down is going to be Johnson for the Pioneers' pickup of three second and seven. You know, you mentioned the scoop and score there on the fumble, and that's a situation where I think you could take advantage of maybe the chance to scoop and score because it's all blue shirts around you. There wasn't anybody from Sacred Heart that was going to get the ball. But again, in the spur of the moment, he took the safe route. At least you got the ball. That's the important part. Exactly. And the ball in the middle of the field for a second and seven. Back to the left and to the right of the shotgun quarterback, Chia Rolanzio. It'll be the same play. Here comes to Floria sprinting up the middle. It's going to be touchdown. Your Bucknell Bison. Oh, my almighty. Oh the seas parted and to Floria sprinted. Wow. I mean, that was probably the largest running lane we have seen all year. That offensive line, as you said, came across. There was a great pulling guard block there, and that took out the linebacker completely. Uh, Pat Finn comes through and pulls, and he just obliterates the linebacker, and that was the only guy that could have made the play. Burdick trying to go two for two. Tom Adams, the snapper, good snap this time, good hold as well by Haran, and once again, Erna gets it through the uprights, good, and Bucknell takes a 14-0 lead over Sacred Heart with just 9.04 left first quarter. We're going to take a television timeout, and when we return, we will uh, get you caught up to date on this drive. Once again, 14-0 orange and blue. Back with more on Bison Vision on the Patriot League Network from Stadium after this. Yard drive, 13-yard run by the brand new captain of the team for Bucknell, Joey DeFlorian. Bucknell leads it 14-0 now with 9.04 left first period. Boy, that turnover, Bucknell turned it into points. Yeah, and that's what you absolutely have to do. And Bucknell's only done that for 14 points this year. Sacred Heart has actually had fewer turnover opportunities, but only converted one into a touchdown. Torres going to be booting this one for Bucknell right to left towards the opened end of Christie. Meacham is not out there to return this kick. We'll see. It's Ennis. And it'll be in the end zone. He's going to take it out a yard deep. Comes up the near side to the 15, to the 20. He's going to be planted as he'll cross the Sacred Heart 24. Mark Piles will put him down at the 25. So first and 10 for Sacred Heart. Boy, this is a huge drive for the Pioneers. Well, this is a drive for the Pioneers. You have to hit the reset button now. You're down 14 to nothing before you even had a chance to blink. I mean, I think you got, what, three plays in before you were down 14 nothing. And this is, again, one of those up-tempo offenses. So if it's not getting first downs and it's turning the ball over this could be a really long game for the team in white and red spot the ball at the 24 Meacham is not in there I think it's going to be OC Emil Perea and he'll get the handoff to the boundary here at the near side and he will skirt his way for about four yards for Mark Piles can meet him and drop him at the 28 yard line three yards officially no four yards, so second and six pioneers. Boy, he gets to the edge so quick there and got around that block and put turned something out of nothing there. And that was actually Eli Terry on that carry. And Terry remains out there, so I'm not sure if OC is injured or not. He's the leading ground gainer for Sacred Heart coming in. Duke in the shotgun, facing a second and six. Goes back to pass. He's under pressure. Now he'll tuck it and run. Oh, he tripped on his lineman and falls for a loss back to the 25. I think he tried to elude the rush of Abdullah mm -hmm. Anderson and just tripped on his lineman, I think. Yeah, he actually, uh, actually, I think what, what happened was he ends up going, getting, uh, spinning underneath an attempted tackle. Then he, as you said, did exactly that. Trips over the uh, guard on the right-hand side there. Lewis. That's going to be a third down and 10 now for Sacred Heart back at the 25. Duke. Drops back to pass, throws a dart down the far side. Oh, it'll be dropped wide open. But looking into the sun over on that far side of the field was his intended target, Lawrence Nimbart, the Richard senior from West Hartford, Connecticut. And he catches 80 yards coming in. He just kind of got his hands messed up. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think he lost that one looking back into the sunset here in, in Lewisburg. And, and he was a little more wide open than uh, he should have been. I think Bucknell had some coverage problems there because everybody was kind of looking at each other afterwards. Ryan O'Dowd, nine punts, 35.3 average, one inside the 20. 
Had one block last week, but he'll get an end over end kick to Colin Johnov will race up and call for a fair catch at the Bucknell 43 yard line. So good field position for a Bison team, which already leads it by two touchdowns with under eight minutes left first period, Kevin. Well, this, is, uh, this is one of those, you know, put it away early, put pressure on them early. Not put it away early, but you could definitely put a lot of pressure on if you can get three straight drives where you've scored a touchdown or score points on this one. And remember, there was a uh, punt block last week for Sacred Heart. By the way, we do have a media timeout, so we'll take another break. 7.51 remaining first quarter. Lucknell 14, Sacred Heart nothing. We have our director, Terry Burke, Sam Dixon on graphics and replay. Camera operators today, Evelyn Morales, Chris Barton, and Nathan Grant. At the 43, Bucknell leading 14-0 first quarter. Goes with a stretch handoff to Floria, squeezes through a little opening and is able to get it up to the 45-yard line and pick up two in the process. Parvelous, who rhymes with marvelous, got the tackle. And boy, CJ has been marvelous this year. Second team only in see a year ago. Had 20 stops coming into tonight's game for Sacred Heart. Well, look at those numbers. That'll tell you right there on the game stats right now. 14 yards offense for Sacred Heart. Bucknell with 17 yards just on the ground for the 69 that are in the air now. That was a pickup of two, so second and a Bison. Chi is back in the shotgun. It's going to look to pass. Throws it deep down the far sideline. Man is there, and it's going to be incomplete. I think he was looking downfield. Well, for DeFloria, who had swung out of the backfield on a wheel route, and boy, he had a step or two or three on the defensive back. Actually, there was a good 10 yards, <laughs> and that was Long one of those. Steps. <laughs> yeah, there were big steps, yeah. That was one of those. He was so wide open. I think even Chi was surprised about it. That wheel route, he comes around the corner. No one even saw him. The corner is 10 yards behind him before he even reacts, and that's one that Chi's going to see tomorrow going, Oh man, why didn't I hit him open? Why didn't I lob that. that one under it, uh, underneath it? Right. Third and eight for the Bison. Long count by Chi Rolanzi, who's in the shotgun to Floria to his left. He's going to pass. He'll throw a dart, and it's going to be over the head of, of Adam Alola at the 45 of Sacred Heart. And that'll be the first time that Sacred Heart's defense has held Bucknell. So that, that elicits a nice round of applause by the Pioneers fans below us. It'll be the first punt today for the very fine punter, Alex Peachin. 18 punts coming in, 44.3 average. First team all Patriot a couple of years ago, missed almost all of last year. He has six inside the 20 with his heels at the Bucknell 31. I'm gonna guess that it's gonna be tough to get it inside the 20, but don't doubt Alex. He's got those rugby shoes, they work well. Has some time and he will get a wobbly kick that Ennis is going to call for a fair catch and it's inside the wow. 10, not just the 20, inside the 10 at the eight yard line. Boy, I, again, when your heels are inside the on the 10 or behind the 10, you really often don't want to. Uh, <laughs> I'm just watching here on the sidelines, Alex Peachin looked like he was doing a wedge shot. <laughs> they were doing an imitation of a golf swing on a little wedge shot. Well, I saw that on college game day on ESPN this morning. There was a team that was down 32 points in the fourth quarter, and the punter came out and then he got a great punt, and he did a little thing like that. <laughs> Here's a handoff by Duke, and this is going to be Terry, I believe. And yeah, it's Terry. And Eli, the junior from Jersey City, New Jersey, gains a couple of yards, actually past the 10. He'll go up to the 14. It'll be second down and, well, that game, give him six, second and four. I'll tell you what, you have to be in good shape on a night like this for as warm and humid as it is to go this quick the Sacred Heart is. Okay, and this time Duke will keep it around right end, and he'll fight close to the first down sticks, but it'll be stopped about two yards short at the 16. So that'll leave Sacred Heart down 14, nothing with 625 and counting first period here in Lewisburg with a big third down and two. That was the right read, but there still wasn't many lines in the paragraph on that one to, to make it a good read. And he had no good option there. Third play of this drive. So far, it's been a fumble and a punt for the two offensive series for Sacred Heart. Hand off Terry, he'll catch the corner. He'll get the first down as he'll break a tackle by Piles and run out of bounds after getting up to the 21 yard line. So that'll be the first first down. Since remember that first series where Sacred Heart looked really good before fumbling the ball. Yeah, they had that one first down and that was it. And that one was only by about a yard or two at most. 
Miles almost ran that one out of bounds before he had a chance to get to the sticks. That's a good effort, though, to get to there. They're still working on Meacham. It looks like they are taping his left ankle. It'll be a quick screen out to the near side, and there's going to be a penalty flag down and a great open field tackle by Colin Johnoff. The intended target was Ennis, a guy who I think is going to get flagged here almost whiffed on a block for Sacred Heart. May have blocked too low. We'll see from our referee here, Jeffrey Jinzuski. He is will be against Sacred Heart, and that'll be the third penalty already on the Pioneers. First no foul, the legal block below the way, number seven of the offense. Half the distance to the goal, replay first down. So that's going to be Barney who gets called, and that's the second 15-yarder against the Pioneers. It's going to be a quick screen, and what's worse, he didn't even, well, yeah, got a good block, but it was down low. You know, it, it's it, this is one of those things that for years they've been doing that, but now that more and more teams are running these wide receiver screens and those cut blocks by the receivers, the officials are calling it more and more. I don't know that it's a point of emphasis, but I think it has been over the last two years called more often than I can ever remember. 5.38 left here in this first quarter. Quarter. Clock stilled with that uh, penalty, third of the first quarter against Sacred Heart. 14 0 Bucknell. Got a fumble that led to a touchdown and a great pass, too, from Chi Rolanzo. Here is Duke faking a handoff on a power jet sweep to the near side of the field. He'll keep it, but not get much as Richard and Fox team up to grab Duke. Duke. The NEC Offensive Player of the Week back on September 4th. He had 236 total yards of offense, three TDs against the Stetson. What's their nickname? The uh, hat. <laughs> Close. The, uh, uh, what's the, uh, I, I can't think well, of What is Stetson? It is. Yeah, I can't think. <laughs> it's the Hatters. The boy. Hatters, all when, right. When you take go. a look at Duke, man, he can do it all against Lafayette. He had a great game as well as they knocked off the Patriot League team, the Lafayette Leopards, throwing a touchdown pass. Now it'll be a handoff on second and 20. This time Terry will get the handoff, and he'll carry it off the right guard for Richard brings him down again. And, boy, Ben, Richard, Abdul Anderson, Mark Piles were the captains for the first three games of the year. This past Tuesday, Joey DeFloria was voted by the team to be at it. Yeah, that tells you the kind of respect that he gets from this team. And I think Coach Susan mentioned it with you in the pregame, too, about the fact that, you know, if he would have been available in the spring, he thinks it would have happened there. He was injured in the spring. It'll be a third and 15 for Sacred Heart. Here's Duke to pass. Now he'll roll out of the pocket to the right. He'll look downfield, heave it deep down the near side. It's going to be intercepted. Oh, baby. Joe Lauro comes up with the big INT. That'll be his first pick this year. It's good to have Joe back. He battled so many injuries last season, and Duke was flushed out of the pocket. He had a guy deep in us, but I thought Lauro kind of tricked him into making that throw. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you're looking at it Sacred Heart's point of view, it's like, all right, it's as good as a punt for us. It's okay. But I'll tell you what, it still shifts momentum. He actually throws that off his back foot and still puts it in the air 50 yards. I, I was impressed with the arm strength alone to even get it that far. That's yeah, a good call. It is considering how O'Dowd normally punts for Sacred Heart. Might Bucknell. be better than a punt. Might be at the 36. Bucknell will go play action. Chi now is going to be swarmed and dropped. He tried to go with a pass over the middle, but that guy, Justin Bethea, back from an ankle injury, was taken away. And he didn't want to just throw it up for grabs, so he ended up eating the ball for a sack. Uh, well, maybe not even a sack. I was say, the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he might have lost a half a yard. That's actually, in this case, a smart play. You're not forcing the ball. There's no need, especially on first down, to force the ball. There was nobody over. Open. You had no running lanes. Preserve yourself. Preserve the football. Under four minutes left first period. 14-0 Bison. Sacred Art faking a blitz. Here they come. It'll be a screen against Ed, but the pass well over the head of the Thay, and I think that she, feeling the pressure, wanted to get rid of that ball, and he didn't quite get it on target. It'll be second, should be third and ten, I believe, for well, Buckman. And, and she's over to the left side a little bit further than normal, and that's a long throw in the first place. He's throwing it all the way across from the far hash mark uh, all the way almost to the Bucknell sidelines as they move right to left. And he's got to put some mustard on it because if it floats there at all, it's a pick six the other way. And just put a little too much mustard and overthrew the receiver. At the Bison 36, it'll be third and 10. Three wide outs right. That's the wide side. She going to take the snap, throw on the move short. Adam Alola, the tight end, or fullback, actually, he'll get it for a short gain up to the 38, and it'll be blasted out of bounds. Is coming up to push him out. Is Kevin Berry, who had nine tackles 
and a tackle for loss last time. Buck Hill and Sacred Art met back in 2014 in Connecticut. It'll be back-to-back -back good defensive series for Sacred Heart and another punt for Buck Hill's too, Alex Peacher. Sorry, Doug, too much pressure on the front the front four putting on right now. That's why you can get actually the full protection if you're still getting four guys to put pressure on the quarterback. Peachin gets a good snap and he'll get a long kick. Ennis again takes it in his spot. He's going to dance to the 10 and get planted at the 11-yard line. Once again, could have let it go bouncing all the way in the end zone, but he didn't. And Buckdale's defense was downfield. And coming up with the tackle that time for the Bison special teams was Brian Marine, I do believe. And it'll be first and 10 Sacred Heart down 14-0 with 3.04 left in this first period. Spot the ball at the 11-yard line. Boy, I you know, you can't ask much more from your punter than to make sure you're pinning him inside the 20, 15, and right around the 10. <laughs> I mean, that's that's outstanding. And it helps when you're when the return man decides to catch them both. Exactly. When they could have easily gone the end zone. Duke will have three wide outs to the wide side, the right side. Hand off to Terry, and Terry will break tackles. He will carry would-be tacklers for Bucknell up to the 15. Gets picked off off his feet at the 19, but he'll gain eight yards on that before Loro can bring him down along with Ben Richard. But Terry... Only 5'11", but 204, the junior, had 80 yards rushing coming into tonight's game. You know, he is a very strong running, running back, and he also has a very low center of gravity. It makes him really tough to try and, you know, stand up. They actually did stand him up that time, and you mentioned Richard almost tripping it out. He'll hand it to Terry Dew on second and short, second and two, and I don't think he'll get the first down. It'll be very close no. as he came up the middle, and <laughs> Sarkowski was in there, Mark Piles and Abdullah Anderson, and looks like it'll be third and about one for Sacred Heart. Yeah, if he got back to the line of scrimmage, he got a generous spot, and he's getting up a little bit slow now. And right now, Sacred Heart's running thin on running backs. Well, yeah, because we haven't seen the leading rusher, O.C. Emio Perea, and Meacham went out in that first series. I'll tell you what, the way he's walking around, I would not give him the football right now. Uh, everything's messed up. Flags are down. Bucknell's defense stutters step, but they're going to say, I think, another call on the Pioneer. Before the snap, start. That's Sean Morrell, the left, the right, left guard. You know who was over him? Abdul Anderson. Abdul Anderson. <laughs> Listen, Abdul Anderson will make you do things that you shouldn't do because you know if you don't do them, he's going to be in your backfield. <laughs> That's the fourth penalty this first quarter on Sacred Heart, trailing 14 nothing with two minutes left in the period. Uh, Abdul Anderson, initials AA, All-American. Boy, I'll tell you what, he's had a great – he impacts the game in so many different ways. Third and five pass, going to be dropped. A uh, dropped. Okay. I, I thought first I thought he caught it. Barney over in the far sideline. Then Marine came up and got him around the top of the shoulder pads, the back of the shoulder pads, and he just dropped the ball, I guess. Felt the hit coming and forgot to catch the ball in the process. Would have had a first like. down. There was a lot yeah. of push in there by Brian. Yeah, he, he was giving him a little bit of room, but it just looked like he was going out there and uh, was expecting the hit and forgot to catch the ball first. I think that Johnoff can get a good return here if the blocks are there. Anytime you're starting on the opponent's 30 to return, or 50 to return the ball, that's nice. Dowd gets a nice kick, hangs up forever, and he draws Johnoff all the way across to the right side of the field. He will spin, stay on his feet, but he dropped back on the Buckdale side of the 50 at the 48-yard line. Is coming up to drop him. It is going to be uh, no B. There is a flag down at the 28-yard line. Another penalty. Let's see. Sacred Art says it's on Buckdale. It's an interesting spot for a holding at about the 27-yard line. Yeah, you wouldn't think, but especially when the return's at about the 45 of the other side of the field. 133 remaining first quarter. 14-0 Bison as Buckdell has scored on a Chiarolanzio pass to a Jack Horan and a 13-yard TD run by Joey DeFloria, but we have been scoreless since the... 904 mark of the first period and the officials still talking things over here yeah. on family weekend. During the kick, holding, receiving team number 28, 10 yard penalty from the end of the I think what they were discussing there, Doug, was uh, where the where the penalty gets marked off. It's going to be uh, whistled against Butler and since it was in the air, should be where the ball was retrieved. Where, where it was returned, yes, the end of the return. See here, 14 nothing Buckdell. You had some score updates, I think, for us involving teams that Buckdell has played this year. Could be the first penalty on Buckdell, by the way. 
and some of the scores that you had mentioned. Princeton leading Lafayette 3-0 in the first. Uh, Jacksonville leading Maris 10-0, that also in the first. Penn a winner over Army, 65-40, I'm sorry, Penn a winner over Lehigh, 65-47, and Tulane beat Army, 21-17. That's a shocker. That's why I was reading Army, I was thinking ahead there. At the For Army, 65-40, I'm sorry, Penn a winner over Lehigh, 65-47, and Tulane beat Army, 21-17. That's a shocker. That's why I was reading Army, I was thinking ahead there. At the 36, it'll be a handoff boundary right to DeFloria, and he'll somehow find a little seam, taking it off behind his right tackle, Stevenson, for a pickup of two to the 38-yard line before being wrestled down by Devlin, Delvin Artis, the defensive lineman for Sacred Heart. Make it, give it three, second and seven. A couple of more scores to pass along. Columbia uh, leading, or actually defeated Georgetown 35-14. Yale, a 49-24 winner over Cornell, and Bryant, Outlasted Fordham 45-40. Wow. High scoring there. Here it's 14-0 Bucknell. Second and seven. Chi going to throw it out of the backfield. Good grab by Chad Freshnock. And he'll twist his way past the Bucknell 40 for being wrapped up and dropped by Slade, the cornerback on the far side. After a pickup of four to Lee Bucknell with a third and fourth, the Bison 42-yard line leading 14-0 in the first quarter over Sacred Heart. Final in overtime, Monmouth wins it 30-23 over Hampton. And Furman with a 45-14 win over Colgate earlier today. That's a shock. Purple Paladins were 0-3 coming in. Now the Colgate 1-2. and two. I did not know that one. <laughs> I, that's a good one. Third and four, Bucknell has to get to the Bison 46. She is in the shotgun. Flory off to his right. He looks that way, and here's a blitz. He'll just get swallowed up. What a great blitz that time. And Parvelous comes in and gets his first sack this year, coming right up the middle and be another punt for Bucknell. Yeah, all of a sudden, uh, Sacred Heart found some defense. He came right through the hole that was uh, on the stunt, and no one was near him. That'll end this four, first quarter, a first quarter that Bucknell was able to own, leading the Pioneers 14-0, but we still have three more quarters left. With the score, Bucknell 14, Sacred Heart nothing. We'll invite you to join us for the second quarter in a moment, and it'll be a punt as we... Switch into the field. Bucktail's punter Alex Peach in left to right. And he gets a howitzer shot. Drives in as again inside his 10. He'll gather it at the Sacred Heart 16. There are flags everywhere as Ennis breaks a tackle at the 25. Fights to the 33 before being dropped by John Hunt. But that's an easy call, Kevin. Definitely a block in the back at about the 10. So that's half the distance to the goal. Fifth penalty on Sacred Heart this half. The rule is if you can see the name on the jersey, don't touch them. They don't have names in the jersey, so you have to go with both numbers. If you see both numbers on the jersey, don't touch them. He saw both numbers on the jersey, no question about it. That You're right, that was an easy, easy call. And the worst part is, it's in a spot that puts you really deep in your own territory now. During your return, the legal block in the back, receiving team, number 16. Pass the distance to the goal, first down. And you know, this is going to be yet another drive starting inside the 20. One inside the 10. This is going to be inside the 10 at the five-yard line for Sacred Heart. It's amazing they're still in this game down only 14 nothing. Yeah, they're at the 10 at the five-yard line for Sacred Heart. It's amazing they're still in this game down only 14 nothing. Yeah, their defense has really stepped it up in the last two or three series, and uh, that's what's kept them in the game. They have a great defense, no doubt. Duke... And the pistol now goes with a quick pass in his end zone. Got wrapped as he throws it. It'll be caught for a first down to the Sacred Heart 33 as the tight end, Jalen De DeVoe, out of Haver Hill, Massachusetts, gets his second reception. And, boy, that was a big one there. Three guys on a nine, just a fly route, and he just had enough time to get that ball away, found the open receiver right next to the safety valve, and, found, and got the uh, big game. Right as Duke play. was about to be tackled the yep. end zone. Gutsy, gutsy throw. Now Duke goes play action. He'll pump. Now he's under duress. Throws a ball up for grabs, and it's going to be incomplete. Out at the far side of the field at the Bucknell 43. It was intended for Ennis. And, or excuse me, I'm sorry, not intended for Ennis that time. It was uh, Andrew O'Neill, his leading target. 16 receptions this year. The senior from Seoul, New Jersey, tried to go up and haul it in. He gave a valiant effort, but John Ave and Loro 
help to collaborate on there and knock the ball loose. Second and 10, Sacred Heart down by 14-0 early second quarter. Yeah, John I'll put his shoulder right where the ball was, was coming in and made a great hit. Buckdale's defense shifts, and that allows Terry to spin away at the line of scrimmage and fight for five hard yards from making six hard yards from the 34 to the Sacred Heart. 40 before Anderson can bring him down. Leave Sacred Heart with a third and four down by two touchdowns. One minute gone, second period. Good read by Duke that time. He saw the shift and knew that the play, his first option was going to be the best option. Now Sacred Heart did a little sugar huddle. We'll break that sugar huddle. And he'll have two wide outs right, two to the left. That's the short side. Play clock at 10. Duke and the shotgun gets a low snap. Now he's going to throw it right, throws a zinger. He overthrows his intended target at the 46 yard line. That was the 6'1 redshirt senior Nimbard. He had a step on Buckdale's chance, Riley and Colin Johnaw, but the pass a little high. It'll be fourth and I guess a punting situation for the Pioneers. Boy, that was one that the uh, Bison actually took a break, got a break on because that one should have been a completed pass. Just too tall for the receiver. So once again, Sacred Heart will punt. And it will be, it's not Ryan O'Dowd. I believe we have a new punter out there. Maybe um, the sun. And it's over his head. Yes, a bad snap, and he's going to fall on it inside the Sacred Heart 15 to sob the new punter in, and the snap goes over his head, and he has to fall on it. That's back-to-back -back weeks that the special teams, the punt unit in particular, have really hurt the Pioneers. They'll spot the ball at the 13 for the second time in this first half. Buckdale will have the ball inside the 20. I don't know if, I, I really don't think that's on the punter because that is way over his head. I, I I don't know how you blame that on the new punter. No, no, I, it's definitely on the I mean, snapper. I don't think Manute Bowl could have caught that one. <laughs> you remember Manute Bowl? Yeah, what was he, 7'5 or seven something seven. like that? 7'7". <laughs> the uh, snapper was Josh Faria. I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, was uh, Jake Davis. So at the 13 of Sacred Heart, Buckdale in business, leading 14 nothing second period. Moving left to right, handoff to the wide side to Floria, breaks a tackle, but will still have to work hard just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Good job stringing that one out by the defense for this team of uh, Sacred Heart. Kamal Whitaker, the Camp Springs, Maryland Richard senior, brings him down, and it's going to be a second down and about 10 for Buckdale, leading 14-0, two minutes gone, second period. Too many white shirts early in that play in the backfield, and there was really nowhere for Joy to run. That's kind of unusual. A lot of times, Buckdale coach Joe Susan and the new offensive coordinator Bobby Acosta like to go short side to Joey, but went wide side that time. In the full house backfield, it'll be another handoff to DeFore. He'll try the wide side again to his right. Nothing doing. In fact, it'll be a loss back to the 14 yard line as, boy, everybody was in there, led by Kevin Berry for this Sacred Heart defense. That defense is really stiffened. And, you know, coming in, as we said, Kevin, they were top 10 in the country in terms of, or top 20 in the country, 15th in the U.S. in terms of overall defense. Well, you know, that if it looks very reminiscent to the first couple of uh, series that Bucknell had where they were really overloading the run. They're doing that again. Now is an opportunity to run a play action. Not here on third down, though, because you're not going to fake anybody if throwing the ball. Third and 11, one wide out left. But it'll be a handoff to Flory inside, and I think he just wanted to try and set the ball up yeah. in the middle of the field for a field goal opportunity for John Burdick. Boy, he was snowed under. Give credit again to uh, the linebacker Barry for Sacred Heart to swallow up to Floria. So spot the ball at the 13, back to the original line of scrimmage, and it'll be a field goal opportunity here for John Burdick. Now, Burdick this season is two for four, long of 33. This is going to be a 30 about a 30 yard field goal 30 and a half 30 and a half ran on the 30 and a, on the 20 and a half yard line Oh, so very low snap. Great job by Iran to pick the ball up. And Burdick from 31 yards kicks it through the uprights. And Bucknell has a 17-0 lead. Again, because of a mistake by Sacred Heart, we have a media timeout. 11.43 remaining here in this first half. Bucknell leads the Pioneers 17 to nothing. We'll take a timeout as well. This is Bucknell Football presented by Wise Markets. Doug Bird song along with Kevin Hur after a 31-yard field goal by Buckdale's John Burdick. 
officially a 30-yard field goal. That was a four-play, zero-yard drive. So Sacred Heart at least, you know, kept Buckdale within three points instead of giving up seven or six and maybe an extra point. So Coach Joe Susan crossed the way, and he and his team enjoy a 17-0 lead. But remember, last time these teams met, it was Sacred Heart that had a quick 10-0 lead on Bucknell, and the Pioneers ended up losing 36-20. Uh, Torres will boot it to the far side, and it will go bouncing out of bounds. Boy, that's a big penalty. Only the second this first half on Bucknell. It'll give Sacred Heart good field position at the 35. You know, two weeks ago, he was deadly at making that stay inside the pylon and rolling through the end zone. And uh, unfortunately, this time could not get the remote control working properly to keep it in bounds. You know, they do have a remote control tackle done. Yes, yes. Uh, it's becoming more and more popular at a lot of different levels. It started at Dartmouth. They were the ones that kind of put it together. It's not a cheap thing, but man, is that thing fast. I understand it can run like a 3.8 a or something <laughs> ridiculous like that. NFL may sign him up. I, I'll tell you what, you want to give him the football. Looks like Meacham is back in after injuring his ankle in the first quarter. At the 35, Sacred Heart down 17. First half handoff to meet Chip to the boundary right. He'll break a tackle and fight to the 36 yard line before Richard and Marine trip him up. And it's going to be a pickup of one. Second and nine. Pioneers now with 11.30 and counting left. First half. They need a score in the worst way, Kevin. No, they absolutely do. You, you got to get something with positive momentum here. Uh, even the fan base right now is starting to become a little bit flat and wondering what's going on with this offense. In the shotgun, Duke looks to pass. He'll throw it, and it'll be a low grab, and it was complete. Short of the first down to the 41. Great job by Nimbard, who's 6-1. Had to go all the way down to his ankles, and Bucknell is saying that it's an incomplete pass, but the, uh, the uh, referee on this near side said, no, it's a catch. They're going to actually talk about it with the uh, back judge. The back judge says, no, he hit the ground. He would have had a pretty good look. The side judge could see. see and we can't really yeah, tell that angles from behind and you can't see it looks like he gets the un arms underneath it the back judge is the one that made the call and I'm really surprised because he I don't know that he had much of a better angle than we did on that <laughs> maybe not it'll be third and uh, nine for Sacred Heart down 17 nothing four minutes gone in the second quarter here in Lewisburg on family weekend. Beautiful night for football in central Pennsylvania. Three down linemen for Bucknell. They'll blitz with a fourth. Here's a pass. It'll be caught for a first down or close to it. No! Oh, he could have wow. cut up field, but instead the receiver that time, DeVoe, the tight end who caught a big first down grab before, came laterally to the near side towards the Sacred Heart bench. He was tripped up at the 42, and it'll be fourth and three for the Pioneers. It's third down as a receiver. You have to know where the sticks are. He ends up, well, there's another look at that, uh, at the last play they hit there. It was really, really close. Now, in looking at that second replay there, the back judge may have been able to see at a, at a left side that we couldn't see and see it hit the ground, oh, no, which is why he ended up getting uh, getting the chance to overrule. But again, you need to know where that third down marker is. You can't run laterally to get another 15 when you need three. Kasab gets the punt away, and John will race to the near sideline, called for a fair catch, but it's going to bounce out of bounds 32. before he can get it. And the official's running up at the 30. Come on, Kevin. Hey, 30, that's good. <laughs> if you're, when you're within two, I mean, you win, most of the time you win on the prices, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 17 nothing. Bucknell, 10-18 left in the half, and Bucknell needs to just keep going here, but Sacred Heart's defense has been very, very tough to move against here recently as we do have a media timeout right now. Bison by 17 over the visitors from Connecticut, the Sacred Heart Pioneers, 10-18 left in the first half. We're going to take a break. This is Bucknell football. Doug Birdsong, Kevin Her, Rob Sinner, our game producer on Eagle 107, on Patriot League Network, director is Terry Burke, Sam Dixon with graphics and replay. Nate Grant, Evelyn Morales, Chris Barton, our camera operators at the 35. Chief goes in the shotgun, throws it out of the backfield, and Chad Freshnock has been a target now three times this first half on passes. Coming in, Kevin, so grab that for a couple of yards to his left. Coming in, he only had two catches for 15 yards. That's that little reverse pivot again, and then dump it off to the uh, running back out of the flat. But that time, 
the outside linebacker adjusted very well to it. That was Barry and Kevin, of course, no surprise. He had nine tackles and a tackle for loss last time these teams met preseason all NEC as well. Ten tackles last week in the 45-7 loss to the Seawolves of Stony Brook. Second and eight. She goes with a quick darting pass. Great catch by Justin Bethea. First time he's been able to play since game number one against Marist. And the North Carolinian won't take it near first down yardage to the 38 before being wrapped up by Slade, the cornerback on the far side. It's good to have Justin back after the high ankle spring. He worked hard in rehab to get back. At the 38, it'll be third and two. He's probably one of the few bison right now that feel comfortable in this kind of weather in, uh, for fall. I mean, th yesterday was the first day of fall. This is the warmest game we have played in the Northeast all year. It's been really weird. I mean, it was the West Coast that had this exactly. kind of heat earlier. We were in the 70s at best earlier in the season. Third and two for Bucknell, leading 17-0. It'll be Chia Rolanzia rolling to his right, has targets, throws it to the short bat. He will run for a first down, as that's going to be Butler, his favorite target. And Allen now has 500 yards in his career. So he'll take it up to the 44 of Bucknell before being dropped by a backup cornerback for this team. Kevin Sears for the Pioneers. First and 10 Bison leading 17 nothing with 840 and counting. Chi does a nice job of throwing on the run and it's a throw to uh, his a little further to his right. So it's an easier throw to make and then it's not across his body, but he still doesn't really get a chance to set his feet to throw it and does a nice job of it. At the 44, it'll be a pitch back to Freshnock showing some speed. He'll catch the corner coming up the far side. He'll ramble for eight yards before being pushed out of bounds on the far side by Whitaker, but Chad Freshnock normally not one to show wheels. That's Joey DeFloria, but he'll take it for eight into uh, Sacred Heart territory will be dropped at the 48 of the Pioneers. Yeah, you don't often see him get to the edge like that, but man, he had he had first down marker yeah, in his yeah, mind, yeah, and he must have just barely had a foot out of bounds because I thought he was going to get to the first. Down. Nice job leading the way. Second and two, Bucknell. Chi hands off fresh knock. He'll dance to his right, and then the hole closed up, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage no more. Be a third and two is coming up to make the stop for safe Sacred Heart's defense. It's going to be uh, Christian Ladois, and it'll be third and two Pioneers down 17 nothing in the second quarter. Pyramus, the linebacker, is the one that actually makes the play on that one uh, uh, possible. You're right, there was this hole there. Pyramus steps up, fills the gap, and all of a sudden that hole shuts right down on him, and he had nowhere to go. Third and two Bison. We have 7.25 and counting left before halftime. In the pistol, Chia Rolanzio, fresh knock behind him, a handoff, Chia will spin away from the defense, he'll fight for a first down! What a play by fresh knock as he went off to his right, spun back to his left, and was able to elude pioneer defenders for a first and 10 inside the Sacred Art 45 at the 44. You know, I, I don't often use the word, but that was nifty. That was nifty. That was just a nifty little move. He comes in, sees the, uh, the linebacker, spins to the left, sl slide steps, not side step, a slide step to the left, and then leans ahead for the first down. And the first man he made miss was Kevin Berry, the all-NEC linebacker. Yeah, that's a good miss. It's a high-quality miss. First and 10 pass by Chi. He'll throw it on a crossing pattern to Butler. He'll put on the brakes as he'll get a yard or two down to the 43 of Sacred heart and then he's immediately dumped right there by Sears and that'll leave Bucknell with a second and eight but this is a long drive in terms of time right now already taking four minutes off this second quarter clock well it's one of the things we talked about Sacred Heart's offense is not set up to be the time-consuming drive offense they're quick hitters they're wearing you down but if you're not getting first downs and you're going three and out or even six and out it's a problem now in the pistol, Chia Rolanzio, a fresh knock behind him, pitches it to the boundary right. No, this is to Floria, and DeFloria is going to be swarmed and dropped. No game on second and eight. Whole host of white shirts there, and this time coming up to make the stop is Max Trudeau. So it will be third and eight, Buckdale leading 17-0 with 5.59 and counting first half. I think that time uh, DeFloria might have gotten... Uh, kicked by accident on the way up because he kind of took offense to that one a little bit. And the official was right there to break anything up before it happened, but there was an exchange of uh, how's uh, your college season going? Things good? Nice day. Third and eight for Buckdale. Two deep safeties. The middle of the field could be open. 
See if Chi, who has backs to his left and to his right, will go that way. Here comes pressure off the corner, and Chi is grabbed. A play by Gio Rolanzio. He just pushed it almost like a Utah pass out to Freshnock, who had found a seam out to his right, and he'll take it for a first down to the Sacred Heart 29. Yeah, that wasn't a shovel. It, it was, you're right, it was kind of a push pass. That's, that's a great definition for it. And it was very heads up by G because he very was in much, the grass. Very much. And remember, in practice, you don't get grabbed like that. So, you know, to be able to have the peace of mind to be able to so, throw it out. Somewhere between a flick and a push. Very much so. At the 29 of Sacred Heart, Bucknell has it first and 10. Offset eye, play action. Chia Rolanzio looked to go deep. It was taken away. Now he's going to tuck it, and he'll throw it the last second. He'll be batted out of bounds. He intended it for the tight end, making his first career start. Alex Twyford in place of uh, Andrew Podbielski, who has the bad ankle. And Podbielski has come back to the ball a few times. This time, uh, Twyford, the freshman, didn't, and it allowed uh, Parvillus, the linebacker, to bat it down. It'll be second and 10, Bucknell leading 17 nothing with 448 left first half over Sacred Heart. She took a little bit of a shot there on the sidelines as he comes out to the near side. He sees nobody's open, so he just kind of flings it, and he gets driven into the sidelines. She Rolanzio has had a pretty good first start, replacing Matt Mew. Second and 10. Chirolanzio tries yeah. to throw, but there'll be flags down. The ball didn't get snapped. Everybody else moved. They call a false start on Bucknell's offense, and that'll make it second and 15 for Bucknell. 71, 79, <laughs> 74. It was a 70. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it was all of them because no, okay. the ball just didn't come out of the center. 73, I think, was the only one that didn't get called for because he's the one that didn't quite snap the ball. Move the ball back to the Sacred Heart 34. Bucknell leading the Pioneer 17-0. A 30-yard field goal by Burdick. A uh, Chiralanzio pass to Haran and a 13-yard TD run by DeFlori. But boy, it is a humid night out there tonight. And you got to wonder if some people on this Sacred Heart defense are gas. Second and 15 after the step off. Chi goes with a quick pass out of the backfield. And it'll be short of DeFlor or Freshnock as he tried to flip it out to the right. And there was pressure up the middle that time. And it'll leave Bucknell with a third and 15. Yeah, too many people coming in there too quick in that one. That's a quick hitting pass if that's the... Uh, first receiver typically that's actually your check down emergency receiver so you can imagine how little time she had to decide where to go with that one Buckdale has to get down to the pioneers 19 yard line on this third and 15 Haran and adam alola split left to the right side butler and kenner kyle is yet to catch a pass but caught a big one about this same situation last week down in williamsburg virginia Chiralanzio in the shotgun, steps up, throws it. It's going to be caught by Kenner, and it'll be a first down. No! They'll say his right little tiny toenail was on the line. Out of bounds. Boy, he knew where the sticks were, and he had it dead to rights. Kevin at the 18 just couldn't quite get his foot in bounds, the official says. And this will be the 13th play of this drive. Clock hadn't moved a whole lot lately. 438 left in the half. What a frozen rope by Chi. It'll be fourth and 15. I think Bucknell, Bucknell will look to punt. Yep, that's a good call. His toe tap was right on the line. Excellent call by the official. But great grab by Kenner. He just couldn't quite get his foot in bounds. So Peachin will come back out. And Kevin Hur will head down to the field to talk with the head man, Joe Susan, here in just a few minutes at the 34-yard line. And there's going to be a penalty flag down. Does Bucktail have too many men? I'll delay of game. And it looks like not not the worst case situation right there. You can, and I was going to say the smart move is to decline it, but they already did it before I had a chance to say it. Oh come on, you didn't know that. You heard them say it. No, 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 no. I was thinking that earlier. So keep the ball at the 35 of Sacred Heart, and it will be a fourth and 15 for Bucknell. A low snap. Good job by Peachin. He will put the ball straight up in the air, and this time a fair catch called for by the returner Ennis, but he still lets it bounce and it'll be the third punt this half by Peachin, all three of them inside the Sacred Heart 20 and let's make it more impressive inside the 10 as this one will drop right at the 10 yard line we have a media timeout 427 left in the half, it's the Bison 17 and the Pioneers nothing, Sacred Heart will get the ball inside the 20 and that's been the case most of this first half trailing it by 17 when we return. Alex Beach in four
four punts tonight, averaging 47 yards per punt. And by the way, he has four inside the 20. This one will leave Sacred Heart first and 10 at the 10. Handoff, big hole, Beecham. He'll break it free to the 20, up to the 25 yard line. And that'll be a first down run for Jordan, who injured his ankle in the first quarter. We're down to 420 and counting first half. Bucknell leading Sacred Heart 17 0. Spot the ball on the 15 yard run. The 25, fourth first down of this first half for Sacred Heart. Back to pass is Duke. He'll go deep down the far sideline. Flag is down. Man is open. It's going to be incomplete. Barney had raced past the Buckdale defensive backs. Couldn't hold on at the 30, though. So that's going to be a situation where it'll be a hold against Sacred Heart. That's going to be on the redshirt senior, Brad Tiernan, the straight in the New Hampshire 6'3", 290 center. And that'll be the six penalty for 55 yards on the Pioneers. Kevin has made his way down to the field. Boy, just like Marist in game number one, Kevin, penalties hurt the Red Foxes, and it's certainly hurting the Pioneers. Well, you know, AA hasn't made a play yet, but he's been a part of a lot of these penalties, including that one. Duke goes with a design quarterback draw, gets a nice block, cuts it up to the near side to the 18. They'll be wrapped up and dropped right there by Buckdale's Mark Piles. Piles, the veteran, co-captain, senior out of Lebanon, Pennsylvania, at 18 tackles coming in. He needed four more for 100 in his career, and that is his fifth. So congratulations to Mark Piles, his 101 career tackles on the year, or on the career. At the 19 yard line, second and 15 Dukes, or uh, Dukes quarterback, uh, he'll throw it downfield, it's gonna be dropped. Boy, he had uh, his tight end DeVoe streaking down the middle, just like he did down the seam on uh, the series before for Sacred Heart. Bobbled it at midfield. He might have gone the distance if he could have held on. Instead, it's third down and 16 for Sacred Heart. Yeah, that's two that should have been caught. And right now, Bucknell's defense is trying to figure out how these guys are coming down the middle of the field and getting behind the safeties. Well, uh, that's probably the third time. And that that was not on Duke that time. I mean, the uh, senior able to put it right in the hands of the senior DeVoe. Back to pass is Duke on third and 16. And there's another man wide open. He'll catch it for a first down at the 45. As that time he was hauled in by his favorite target, senior Andrew O'Neill. He now looking for a touchdown pass in eight of the last 11 games that the Pioneers have played. But he gives him a first down at the 44. That'll be the fifth first eight of the last 11 games that the Pioneers have played. But he gives him a first down at the 44. That'll be the fifth first down of the half. Trailing 17-0 are the Pioneers. They do have all three timeouts. Great grab by O'Neill. There's another pass intended, and there's a broken tackle at midfield. And Barney will take it for a first down for Sacred Heart. Into Bucknell territory. He'll be dropped at the 44-yard line by a whole host of Bison defenders, including Simeon Page. But move the sticks again. Boy, this is the best drive that the Pioneers have had. And remember, they started this at their own 10. At the Bucknell. Tell you what, Doug, there's some hitting going on down here, too. And some missed tackles, too, at the Bison 44. First and 10, handoff up the middle. There's Terry now back out there, and he's going to spin for four yards. He dropped down at the 38-yard line. And you don't see this too often. I don't know if Bucknell, if they give up another first down, they want to take a defensive timeout. Yeah, right. and, and tell you what, this is one of those series is exactly what Sacred Heart wants to do. Here's the handoff by Terry on second and five, and he'll take it behind his right guard. Lewis for a couple of yards. Anderson brings it down. Be third and three for Sacred Heart with 220 and counting first half, trailing 17 nothing. But if they score here, Kevin, they'd probably be right back in the game. And, and I'm wondering, is this four down territory now, no matter what happens? Yeah, that's a good call. You get the ball to start the second half. That's right, because the Pioneers deferred. Back to Bass Duke on third and three, throws a dart, and it's going to be caught. Breaking a tackle is Nimbard. He'll come down the near sideline, and he won't have to worry about a fourth down conversion. He'll take it for a first down to the Bison 15. Laurel will bring him down there and quickly. Ninth play of this drive, which has taken a lot less time than Bucknell's 13 play drive earlier. It'll be at the Bison 15. First and 10, Sacred Art down by 17, late second quarter. And now a timeout, no, a penalty no flag. flag. Wow, and it's gonna go against Sacred Art. May have tried to hurry too much. That's Kevin. exactly what it was, Doug. Before the snap, false start. 
Number 11, never got set. Five yard penalty. Remain first down. And he was standing, I was standing like right next to him almost, of course not on the field, and he was definitely dancing around. The official was right next to us both and immediately threw the flag. That is going to be seven penalties for almost 50 yards in the first half, Kevin. Move the ball back to the Bison 20, where it'll be first and 15, Sacred Heart. 158 clock still with the penalty. Left in the first half, 17 nothing, and now Bucknell will take a timeout. And I, I called it, Kevin. I think sometimes you always look at timeouts when you have the ball offensively. I think Bucknell needed a defensive timeout. Good call by Coach Matt Morridge, the defensive coordinator for the Bison. Yeah, I think he went over to Coach Susan and they kind of talked about it right, right about the time that flag came out and said maybe this is a chance we take a little bit of a breather as well. So we get the penalty, time for the penalty, then timeout as well, and you can get a chance to reset this defense and get them a chance to catch their breath. Bucknell, by the way, Kevin, had a 38-yard pass from G. Rolanzio making his first start this year to be able to uh, break this game open with the very first drive of the game for the Bison. It was an eight-play, 70-yard drive. He was able to pass that to Horan. Burdick got the extra point. Then a 13-yard TD run by Joey DeFlory after a fumble by Sacred Heart, two plays, 16 yards. And then a 30-yard field goal by John Burdick. Four plays, no yards after a Bad snap off a punt. Bucknell leading at 17-0, but you know, Sacred Heart first and 15 at the Bison 20. This is a huge drive for the Pioneers. Yeah, this is a must. Listen, I don't think three is going to be enough here. You've got to get it in the end zone right now. Well, they don't have a kicker who normally kicks very deep, only a 19-yarder. Back to Bass Duke. He'll throw it, man, is open, but it's going to be batted at the line, and I mean waiting for that was Brian Marine. If that wouldn't have been batted at the line, Marine would have gone probably 85 yards for a score. Yeah, he almost did anyway. <laughs> he just it was reacting to the ball from where it was supposed to be and was ready to step in front, but you're right. The touch just threw it out of his range a little bit. He broke nicely. There's a second and 15 handoff. Meacham cuts it all the way across the green. He loses yards, but he breaks a tackle. Then it'll get blasted by Lauro out of bounds. All the way down to the Bison 17. That will stop the clock with 149 left in the half. Trailing are the Pioneers 17 nothing to the Bison. 11th play of this drive. Spot the ball on a third and 12 at the Bucknell 17. The, just the sound of that right next to me made me feel pain. Oh. I mean, that was a stick. What a hit. Back to pass probably on third and 12 is Duke. Play clock at 17, takes the snap, looks left, keeps looking left. Now we'll throw it over the middle, and a great grab, but he drops the ball. It'll be incomplete. Great grab at the Bucknell 10 that time by O'Neill. Make it the five at his favorite target. Would have been a, close to a first down, but right as he got the ball, good hit by, I think, Lauro. May have jarred the ball loose, so fourth and 12, and it appears that the place kicker, who is Josh Freyaria, who is one for one, but along of 19, will try a 34-yard attempt. Ball on the right hash mark for the right-footed kicker here. It'll be the 12th play of this drive, trying to get Sacred Heart on the board. 142 left. I know you said you probably wouldn't try and go for three well, here, but you got to get points, and let's see if Freeria can do it. At the 30, would be a 34-yard attempt. Snap is good. Kick winds to the goal post to our left, and it splits the uprights good. So Sacred Heart gets on the scoreboard with the longest kick. 34-yarder by Freeria. That was a very big one in terms of putting this Sacred Heart team within two touchdowns with 138 left in the half. Now, Buckdale does have two timeouts, and the Bison will get another opportunity, but Sacred Heart will get the ball to start the third quarter after deferring the opening kickoff after winning the coin toss. You know, the big difference, though, kicking the field goal there as opposed to at fourth and like 11 or 12 down here, it, it's a little less manageable than maybe the fourth and five or fourth and four that we were looking at at about the 30-yard line. I think that kind of changes the, the game plan. It changes the thought process here, especially with the fact that you've had a couple of drops in this series in key positions where you actually could have scored touchdowns. And it just gives them some points, too. And that was a long drive, 12 plays. And remember, that drive started at the 10-yard line, so it ends up being a 83-yard drive. Well, with 1.38 to go, Bucknell with two timeouts available, you know, they have been just missing on a couple of big hitters here today. They hit on the one earlier in the first quarter with Haran, but they've missed on a couple of other ones that could have been big hitters because of uh, not having enough time uh, to throw the ball. Now, let's see if they'll try and squib this because 
Stephon Moore Green, if he gets his hands on this, it could be 23 to 7. No, they'll go with a sky kick, and Bachdell will have an up back get it at the 30. Coming up the far sideline and fighting to the 37 yard line is the return man, Brian Marine. And Coach Susan had said, Kevin, that uh, Sacred Heart likes to sky kick these, and you got to get some yards. And Marine did again, Kevin, that uh, Sacred Heart likes to sky kick these, and you got to get some yards. And Marine did exactly that. He didn't call for a fair catch. He got it, ran up, didn't fumble, was able to get to the 34. So, pretty good field position here for an opportunity for Burdick to get answer the three pointer by. For Fioria and maybe get one of his own at the 36 yard line. Well, to me, if you're going to sky kick it, though, you want one of the you want one of the linemen. Uh, well, not not that far up, but you want one of the middle row guys to get it, like the second to last row guys, not the guy that's in the deep row on a full sprint. Chirolanzio has pass the ball 12 of 18 he'll pass back here on first and 10 great grab by Kenner he'll sprint past midfield and take it into sacred art territory before being wrapped up by the defensive back Whitaker at the 48 yard line what a rope by Chi and Chi right now in the two minute offense is getting him up to the line and ready to go he did this Tuesday and scored a touchdown in Tuesday's practice, back to pass, Chiaranzio. He's going to feel the pressure, throw it out of the backfield. And DeFlory is going to dance his way down to the 43. And a host of Sacred Heart Pioneers will wrap him up short of the first down at the 41-yard line. Forward progress, and Bucknell will take a timeout. So the Bison will be left with two, one timeout left. Now remember, with 111 left, Bucknell leading Sacred Heart 17-3. to You know, I said you didn't want to waste timeouts on defense, but... Remember when Coach Susan and Coach Borge, the defensive coordinator, took one on that Sacred Heart offensive drive last time? I think that was a good one. Sacred Heart was on the move, forced them to get a field goal. Even though Bucknell has one timeout remaining, you know, with the clock under two minutes, if you go out of bounds, Kevin, the clock stops. So the clock is your friend when you have the ball. Oh, and still with one timeout, you can use that to set up a field goal. I completely agree. That timeout was worth four points to me. I, I think there were, it was absolutely worth four points. So you have one timeout left. You could still spike the ball. You could still run a couple of sidelines. You've got at least three more, at least three more opportunities down the middle of the field and not worry about the clock. Bell 17, Sacred Heart 3, 111 left in the half. At the 41 of Sacred Heart, Chi back to pass under pressure, dumps it out. It'll be intercepted by the Pioneers. Here they come up the near sideline. Chi Rolanzio trying to make the tackle, and he won't. And disaster is struck in Lewisburg as Barry steps in front of the intended target, and the redshirt senior has his first interception, and he's able to go 60 yards, and that was not what the doctor ordered for the Bison. That was probably the first time here tonight that we've seen Chiri Alonso throw the ball where he shouldn't have. That was one he probably should have either gone and put in the fifth row or just taken what he could get and then hitting the reset on the next play. And, and Coach Susan goes out and talks to him and again takes advantage of a teaching moment. Making his first start, and there's an injured pioneer back at the 42. That was Barry returning at 60 yards, and the redshirt senior, who we said, Kevin, had a great game last time, 10 tackles against Stony Brook, preseason All-NEC, nine tackles and a tackle for loss against Bucknell when the Pioneers lost earlier, but there's a lineman hurt being assisted as he'll walk off to the near side. That is Brett Polinski, he's one of the starting defensive linemen, so that would be a big hurt for Sacred Heart. But right now, if they hit this extra point with 58 ticks left in the half, Sacred Heart will only be down a touchdown. What a brand new ball game. Oh, man, you better believe it. High snap. The kick does sail through the uprights. Good, though, by, by the place kicker there, Freya. And Polinski is going to be helped off the field here for Sacred Heart. But what a, what a job by... The veteran linebacker, Barry, he knew where she was going to try and get the outlet pass on a blitz, didn't he? Uh, it'll be interesting now to see exactly what they decide to do with this offense. Now, you get a good return. I think they take a couple of shots here, get a chance for Chi to get back in the saddle again and get over that interception and maybe try and change the momentum in this game before halftime. And remember, Sacred Heart gets the ball to start the second half. Chirolanzio throws his first pick this year. And, you know, Joey DeFloria, the ball was thrown behind. If he would have led DeFloria to his left, 
Barry actually didn't necessarily make a great play. It was almost as if Chi was intending the pass for Barry. But give Barry credit, he caught it, ran 60 yards, and well, that's a veteran well, play. Like I said, it was one of the first times today, if not the first time today, we've seen him force the ball. This will be the kickoff for the Pioneers as they will have booting it to the left. O'Dowd, Buckdale will run it out. Coming up to the near side is Stephon Moore Green. He'll take it to the 24 yard line before being brought down. He didn't hear the whistle, so he actually jumped out of the pile and ran down the near sideline, but Sacred Heart brings him down. He's coming up to make the stop on kick coverage was John Rock. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bison, leading now only 17-10 with 52 ticks left in the half. Boy, have things turned or what? Boy, momentum is a crazy thing, Kevin. <laughs> momentum is a crazy thing, especially in college football, Doug. It can change so quick. But when you have some of the weapons that Bucknell has in man-to-man -man coverage right now, you can make it come your way real fast. She is under center. Could be a run at the 26. He will hand it off, and there's DeFloria. Gets a nice block. He'll run over a man at the 30. He'll have a first down at the 35. Boy, we've seen. I tell you what, it's like two running backs in two different bodies. Fresh knock shows the speed. This time, DeFloria shows the power. First and 10 Bison at the 34. I thought he was the finesse back. That's what I thought, but he got a good block by Adam Alola in the secondary. Allowed him to get a first down at the Bucktail 34. 50. 30 seconds left in the half. Bucktail 17, Sacred Heart 10. First and 10, she under center. Hand off again to Floria, and he will sprint. He'll break a tackle, and he'll take it to the 40, up to the 43, and maybe the loss of Polinski has really hurt this Sacred Heart defense, and they're still working on Polinski, and they have his lineman pads off of him, and he's taking a big drink, and he's a big old guy. <laughs> and he's, I don't think I'd want to smell him, put it that way. <laughs> and Bucknell will use their final timeout here with the ball at the 43-yard line to kind of get things set up here for what could be a series of maybe three plays to try and kick a field goal, or maybe even two. I don't know if you can have three plays or not. Polinski, if you're watching on Bison Vision on the Patriot League Network from Stadium, talking with the training staff, boy, he's not moving very well here. Of course, he officially weighs 295, may have a little bit more girth on him than, than that, so it'll be second and long one for Bucknell at the Bison 43, up 17-10 with 17 ticks left in the half. That would be a great score for Bucknell coming in, having lost two games in a row, but when you're up 17-0 with just about four minutes left in the half, two minutes actually, Kevin. That's Eight good. minutes. Exactly. Second and two at the 43, Chi again under center. It was with a handoff again to Floria, skips to his left, but he's going to be stopped short of the first down. So that will probably end this first half. A very entertaining first half, to say the least, is will probably end this first half. A very entertaining first half, to say the least, is Bucknell will just let the last four seconds click off. And Coach Joe Susan will talk with Kevin Hurd as he makes his way to him. And I think he has the head coach now. Kevin? Doug, Coach Joe Susan, join us. We'll spin you around here real quick. Coach, 28 minutes of football that was well played. Things did not happen as well play, uh, as well in the last two. No, no. They, uh, I think we let them out on defense. They drive. We're missing tackles. They kick a field goal. Then we turn it over. It goes the other way. It becomes a ball game. But it's 60-minute ball game. All right. They've got momentum going into the halftime. We've got to establish our, off, our defense, they, they get the ball. We establish our offense once again, trying to play within ourselves, not trying to make plays that, like the one that he threw, should have just thrown away. We take the next snap. That's sometimes when you play with a young quarterback. But I noticed you took that moment and made it a teachable moment, as you always do. No question. Is it teaching? You know, it's an ongoing thing. You can't yell, at him. You yell to him. <laughs> coach Joe Susan, thanks for your time. Doug? All right. Thank you, Coach, and thank you, Kevin. We are at the half of today's game, and we do want to thank our friends at Valley Farms Dairy. They're a farmer-owned and operated dairy. They've been serving your community since 1935. You can find them at your favorite grocery store. Valley Farms Dairy, a proud sponsor of Bucknell Athletics. And for the break, it's time for the Recruit of the Game, sponsored by Zip Recruiter. You can find qualified candidates quickly and easily with Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire Zip Recruiter. It's the leading job site for Bison fans everywhere. For a free trial, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Bucknell.
and our zip recruiter recruits of the game, Marquise Carter out of Rochester, New York, all state in high school last year. His older sister ran track at Buffalo. Older brother, Devon, played football at Rutgers. He's going to be a great running back too. And Brandon Benson out of Triangle, Virginia. The safety was all conference in high school a year ago. He grew up in a military family and so he got to see a lot of the U.S. to say the least. Those are our Zip Recruits, Zip Recruiter of the game. At the half, Bucknell leads Sacred Heart by seven. That seven nothing score off the 38 yard pass from Chia Rolanzio to Jack Curran, former quarterback. Joey DeFloria, 12 yard run. Burdick got the kick on a two play 16 yard drive. 14 nothing Bison with 9.04 left first period. Bucknell would score again after a bad snap on a punt. John Burdick got a 30-yard field goal out of it. Bucknell didn't drive the ball at all. Four plays, zero yards. But 17-0 Bison yeah. with 12 minutes left in the half. Then the last two minutes of the first half, great drives. 12 plays, 73 yards by Sacred Heart. Josh Friaria ended up with a 34-yard field goal to cut the deficit to 14, 17-3 Bison. And then John Chiaralanzio driving the Bison into Sacred Heart territory in the last minute of the first half, but he throws a pass that was intercepted by the veteran court linebacker, Kevin Berry. He rambled 60 yards, and Friaria got the extra point, and at the half, 17-10 is the score, and you have scores of other games, Kevin Hurt. Yeah, at the half, Elon leads Richmond 19-14, Princeton leading Lafayette 24-10 at the half. Jacksonville is up on Maris now, start of the third quarter, 22-9. Dartmouth and Holy Cross tied at seven now in the second quarter. And some other games of note that are already finals. Penn, a winner over Lehigh, 65-47. It was Columbia defeating Georgetown, 35-14. Yale, a winner over Cornell, 49-24. Bryant by five over Fordham, but nobody played defense. It was 45-40. Furman, a winner over Colgate, 45-14. Some other games in the FCS of interest. JMU with a 28-10 win over Maine. The Choo Choo's with a 73-7 win over VMI. Chattanooga with the win there. And in overtime, it was Monmouth 30 and Hampton 23. Taking a look at some of the halftime statistics. Seven first downs for Sacred Heart to 10 for Bucknell. Bucknell's carried the ball 19 times for 46 yards. Sacred Heart 19 carries for 51 in the air. Bucknell with 126 yards passing to 93 for Sacred Heart. Chiri Alonso's 14 of 21 with an interception and a touchdown. He was sacked once. Duke is 6 for 15 with an interception and 93 yards. I think one of the big things, though, that you look at is the penalties. Bucknell, two penalties for 15 yards, seven penalties for 57 yards for Sacred Heart. But again, most of the situation for uh, Sacred Heart on the scoreboard happened in the last two minutes of the second quarter. Taking a look at third down conversions. Both teams struggling there on third down. Three of nine for Sacred Heart and four of nine for Bucknell. Bucknell with 40 plays offensively for 172 yards, 34 plays for Sacred Heart for 144 yards. This game statistically is pretty much as close as the score is right now, but again, the big difference those last two minutes. And some big plays. Bucknell's John Chi Rolanzio hitting the diving Jim Jack Aran. The ball actually. There were penalty flags everywhere, and the ball almost touched the ground, but Horan did a great job. And then a big fumble against Meacham, who injured his ankle as Bucknell's Ben Richard covered up the loose ball and then led to a Joey DeFloria 12-yard scamper. And the Bison led 14-0, able to tack on three more after a bad snap that went off the hands of the backup punter. Not the listed starting punter for Sacred Heart. Kassab ended up covering that ball up and Great defense by Sacred Heart, great hold by Jack Horan as well on a low snap, and John Burdick able to get a 30-yard field goal, but Sacred Heart's kicker gets a season-long 34-yarder, Friaria, and then John Chiaralanzio making his first start this year, started a game last year, throws behind his intended target. That was Joey DeFloria, and Kevin Berry, the redshirt senior, didn't have to work too hard to get past Chiaralanzio, who dived for him near the goal line. But 
you know, guy who's been there five years, it's good to see somebody not, you know, if you're a Bucknell fan, you don't like it as much, but it's good to see somebody who's put in that much effort in a Division I football situation to be able to make some hay, and certainly Barry has in his career. Took advantage of a bad throw by Cherry Alonzo, and again, Coach Susan talked about it at halftime. That's a throw that you really can't make, and you're forcing the ball, trying to make something happen out of nothing. You know, some coaches will say we're trying to find a 14-point play. There are no 14-point plays. You just try and get, uh, try and make what's there, and that put Bucknell into a into a tough situation there, defensively, or uh, excuse me, offensively. Not only did it stop a drive, it also made the game closer. And then they didn't have enough time to do anything when they got the ball back. And the shame of it is, if he would have led to Floria, now he was under pressure because of the blitz. But if he would have led to Floria, Barry was actually two steps behind yeah, him. The that, ball that went right been, to him. That could have been a big play on the other side too. You're right. Ennis and also for Sacred Heart, it is going to be Andrew O'Neill as we are getting prepared for the kick to start the third quarter. Of course, Sacred Heart won the coin toss and deferred. So Ethan Torres, as Kevin is fanning himself, is the it's breeze. Warm. That, yeah, the breeze we had earlier, right before kickoff, it went away right about kickoff. The Mayflies are out and it's September. <laughs> Torres ends up booting this one to the goal line. Ennis takes it on a knee, but didn't take the knee down. He has big room. Here he goes to the 30, to the 35, to the 40. Cuts it against the middle of the field to the 50. Sprints past the man at the 40, at the 30, at the 20, at the 10. Touchdown, Sacred Heart. And they have blown this one from a blowout to a tight game. We're going to be tied at 17 after a kickoff return of 99 yards thereabouts. Big play after big play. That's what has gotten Sacred Heart back into this game. That's the first kickoff return that Bucknell has given up in a ton of years there, Kevin. Doug, I don't think anybody got a hand on him. No, they did not. And boy, Ennis had made some big plays in the first half, but that was the biggest of all, and the extra point would tie this game up at 17 on the first play of the second half. Is on to attempt it is going to be Freyria, and he is perfect tonight. And just like that, Buckdale led 17 0, and now it's 17 7. Buckdale will get the first opportunity with the ball, and he just can't give up a touchdown on a kickoff return that will officially be 98 yards. Yeah, 98 yards, and it was basically right up the numbers. He finds a seam, makes one cut makes a man miss, makes the kicker miss, then cuts it inside, another man misses, and at that point, he is pretty much off to the races because nobody has an angle on him that can catch him. In our uh, notes, game notes, don't have the bad stuff, <laughs> so don't have listed. Last time, Buckdale gave up a kickoff return for a touchdown, but I tell you, this is my 18th season. I can't remember the last time Buckdale gave up a kickoff return on a touchdown. Uh, a kickoff return for a touchdown, I should say, but happened tonight, so we may be seeing some history here, Kevin. Not the kind Bucknell would like to see. And brand new ball game, 17 all, and just 13 seconds gone. He runs up 98 yards in 13 seconds. We know that. Not bad. Not too bad at all. This kickoff is going to be going out of bounds. So Bucknell's freshman Torres had one of those, and now. Uh, Sacred Heart Pioneers will return the favor, so good field position for Bucknell. But, you know, we mentioned it, Kevin. It's a game of momentum, and Bucknell has got to find a way to seize the momentum again. Otherwise, they could be, you know, and, and the last time Sacred Heart played a Patriot League team, that was Lafayette a couple of games ago, trailed 10-0 and ended up winning big. Yeah. Big Mo is, is definitely not uh, right now on the orange and blue side, no question. Doug, a couple of FBS scores to catch up on and games in progress. Number three, Oklahoma leading Baylor 21-10 in the second. Mississippi, Georgia, rather, leading Mississippi State 14-0. We'll give you a couple of more finals in a bit. Patriot League Network C, Chia Rolanzio, 126, a touchdown but an interception at the 35. Buckdale's drive will start with a quick screen out, and Aran gets a nice block, but he'll get chopped down after a pickup of two. Had a really nice block out there by Adam Alola, but coming up was the guy who really has been making a lot of plays here today in the secondary for the Pioneers, uh, Kevin Sears. He's their leading, leading tackler right now. And Bucknell picks up two, second and eight, 17 all game, early third quarter. One upset in the top 25 college football. NC State dumps off Florida State 27-21. Big win for the Wolfpack. 
Second and eight here. Going to be a handoff. No, Chiaralanzio fakes the handoff to Floria. Now he sprints to his right. Throws it. Great grab, too, by Twyford, making his first career start. And he'll take it all the way to the Bucknell 43-yard line before being wrestled out of bounds on the Sacred Heart sideline, leaving Bucknell with a third and two. Twyford starting today for the injured Andrew Podbielski, and he gets his first career reception. I was going to say, is that his first career re reception there? I'll tell you what, she took a little bit of a hit there on the backside as he uh, released that ball. But, again, he held that ball a little bit longer to make sure the receiver was open that time so he wasn't forcing the ball. Do not see Polinski in. Remember, he had his shoulder pads off. And I don't know if he's going to return to this game for Sacred Heart. He was hurt late in the second quarter. Third and two, Buckdell in a 17 all game third period. To 43, it'll be a delay handoff and nothing doing as DeFloria wrapped up and dropped back at the 40. Coming up there was the defense of the Sacred Heart Pioneers in the top 15 in the country in rush defense. And that was McDougal who brings him down, loss of two. That'll be a punt for Bucknell. So after a fumble on, excuse me, after a TD and TD on the first two drives, Bucknell is punt, punt, punted, 34, 31-yard field goal, interception, and then the half. Yeah, I think Curie Alonzo needs to ride that a little bit longer because nobody was really frozen on that uh, read option running play. Oh, that was a heck of a punt here. And this time the punter will let it go into the end zone. Man. Ennis, I think, was still going to cry and grab that until it went in literally five yards in the end zone. Then he thought, wait, I'm at the goal line. Maybe I better not. So it's going to be a 60-yard punt roughly. That's 70 in the air from where he punted the ball. That is unbelievable. But it will draw back another 20 yards. So it'll be a touchback as it goes in the end zone. And Sacred Heart will get the ball first time tonight with a chance to take the lead. 17 all game, 1240 left. And the third quarter will be first and 10 Pioneers when we return in a moment. This is Bucknell football presented by Wise Markets. Best starting field position for a drive for Sacred Heart. And that coming with 1240 left in the third quarter. 17 all, Bucknell and Sacred Heart at the 20. Hand off up the middle and being chopped down immediately is Meacham. Meacham played a first couple of series for Sacred Heart and injured his ankle on a fumble that Bucknell ultimately turned into a 12-yard run for a touchdown for Joey DeFloria. Pick up a one, second and nine, Sacred Heart. Told you the Mayflies were out, Doug. Man. You're swatting them away here oh, in the booth. It's bad. No, no breeze at all. I don't know what it's like on the field, but up in this booth, not Steamy. very comfortable, I guess. <laughs> second and nine pass by Duke for Sacred Heart. He'll throw it. It'll be caught and immediately wrapped up short of the first down. The 25 was the target. Meacham as Richard helps to bring him down and Bucknell's Ben Richard had a pretty good first half in terms of tackles as he had a number of those. Yeah, he, he had uh, five. Four of those were assisted tackles though, but he was in on five tackles in the first half. At the 25 yard line, a big third and five for Sacred Heart. We're knotted at 17. Bucknell led 17 nothing. With 12 minutes left in the third, here's Duke to pass. He's going to throw it, and it'll be tipped and intercepted. Here comes Bucknell back the other way. Running down the far sideline is the interceptor. He'll be tackled inside the 15 at the 12-yard line. Coming up with the big INT, his second this year. It's Aaron Brown, and Brown gets some congratulatory handshakes as he puts Bucknell in scoring position here at the 13 of the Pioneers. That's why you do the tip drill almost every week in practice and sometimes in warm-ups. You know, the receiver open, but the pass really zoomed in there. Some decent defense on the backside. Pass was actually intended to go to O'Neal, and O'Neal got a hand on it, but he did the wrong thing. He got the hand on it, and the ball went up in the air, and that's usually a bad sign. At the 13, Chia Rolanzi with an offset eye behind him since it's fullback Adam Alola in motion to the left, back to the right. Hand off, here is Freshnock pushing the pile forward, stays on his feet inside the five. He'll be brought down, or inside the 10, brought down at the eight yard line as Brown breathing hard out there. And Freshnock had 10 touchdowns his freshman year, looking to try and get his third touchdown this season. Brown on the sideline going, hey, did you see that? <laughs> I tipped it. It's just like we practiced, too. Yeah, you didn't get in the end zone. Yeah, I know. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> That's what it looked like. That's what that conversation looked like. Officially spot the ball at the seven. Bucknell trying to regain the lead. 17 all, third quarter. Bison and the Pioneers of Sacred Heart University at the seven of Sacred Heart. To Floria back in at tailback. It'll be a reverse. Here's Haran. He doesn't get a block, though, and he's going to struggle forward. And, boy, if Butler would have just gotten a better block, 
Rand might have been able to score. Instead, he goes for one. That's going to leave Bucknell with a big third down and three. And good defense by Sacred Heart because Bucknell playing off the handoff to DeFloria. You know, everybody normally would have gone to their left. Yeah, and, and everybody staying home. That was the important part. And I think the most important move there was... Uh, Looked like it was uh, Finelli, the safety, that actually was the one that steps up and makes the play. And Finelli actually stops that from being a touchdown. Otherwise, it's wide open for six. Third and three. Backs to the left and to the right of Chi. Takes the snap in the shotgun. Hands it off. And DeFloria pushes the pile very close to a first down. In fact, the uh, Bucknell offensive linemen think that DeFloria able to push the pile forward enough for a first down. They may have to pull the chains out as yeah. coming up to make the stop. It They're was first it and him, yeah. ten, first and goal. Bison at the three is coming up to make the stop for Sacred Heart is going to be McDougal. And that leaves Bucknell with a first and goal. The first first down and a couple of series for the Bison. This is a big a one point. in the 17-all game. Yeah, and, and this is a must score. You cannot settle for not getting points on this one at all. You know, if you look at tendencies, Bucknell likes to run here at first and goal. Will Bucknell pass? They have the single receiver, Haran to the right. Offset eye behind Chi, who's under center. He'll go play action. He'll throw in the end zone. Man is open, and it's going to be bobbled by Morris, the backup tight end, making his first start. He was unable to hold on to a boy. He, I think he was scared he's going to go out of bounds on the back end of the end zone. Boy, Jared would have gotten his first career touchdown pass. Doug, I believe that was the play that was called last week at William & Mary in the short yardage situation that they ended up having with a, with a snap that was just bumped on the way back by the guard who was pulling it. Coach was talking about in the pregame. Great call, though, and it was on first yeah. down last week against the yep. Tribe. And it was wide open here, too. Now to be a handoff to Floria. He'll punch the pile forward to the three, to the two. Got pushed forward. Is he over the goal line? Officials are racing in. What will they do? They will raise their hands skyward. Touchdown! Your Bucknell Bison. That's what they'll do. What a great surge by the offensive line. And Joey to Floria gives Bucknell a six-point advantage. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think he got it. I thought he was going to be a yard short, but he just kept going and going, and his knee didn't hit the ground, and they had to unpile him before they could figure it out. Well, there's a new rule in college football, Kevin, and I think Adam Alola, the starting fullback, took advantage. He pushed him from behind. Yeah. Burdick with a big extra point attempt here. Placement is down. Kick seals through the uprights. It's good. And Bucknell has regained the lead after being shocked on a 98-yard kickoff return to start the third quarter. Bucknell now with 9.18 left in the third stanza. Leads Sacred Heart by 7, 24 to 17. We're going to take a timeout. This is Bucknell football presented by Wise Markets from Learfield on Eagle 107. On the first one, I think I swallowed a bug here. <laughs> I was going to ask I don't think if he that's quite made what it. happened. <laughs> I don't think it, we, we just turned out the light because we were being swarmed here. Like, like the movie The Swarm out yeah. here by bugs. So. I mean, it does. It looks like it's baseball season. This is what happens in Little League around here. <laughs> in late June and July, the Mayfly, or uh, late May and June, the Mayflies come out. And I think that's what we have here at Bucknell right now. It's not quite to the point where they're blotting out the lights, but... <laughs> It's not far. That's what you have in May and May to the point where they're blotting out the lights, but <laughs> it's not far. That's what you have in May and in May and June around here when you're playing Little League Baseball at night. So Bucknell has taken advantage of the two miscues here tonight by the Pioneers and another one by a bad snap. And boy, Torres gets his foot into this one. Wow. And ain't going to go out of bounds and taking a knee is in us. He was two yards in the end zone. The Sacred Heart fans went, oh, come on, bring it out. You can run 102 if you ran 98, but I think that was wise on his part. Yeah, I, I mean, he got one opportunity to get clean. I don't think he was going to get a second one, and that was going to take a heck of a run because that time he was coming up the numbers, and Bucknell had numbers ahead of their uh, blockers that time. Yeah, I don't think Bucknell was going to give up another touchdown on a kickoff return. I mean, you never know, but still. At the 25, Sacred Heart now down seven. Maybe Mo is shifted back on Bucknell's side. We'll see. Kevin Duke, the veteran quarterback in the pistol, he has Meacham, I think, back out there. At the 25, he'll hand it off to the boundary to Meacham, and he's going to put his shoulder down and be forced out of bounds by Loro. No gain at the 25, and 
It will be second and 10 for Sacred Heart. Bucknell that time went with about five or six guys down on the line of scrimmage. And as you like to say, it was definitely run blitz time because they were taking advantage. Uh, they were planning for it to be a run and did a nice job of stringing that out. Beecham had hurt his ankle when he fumbled in the first quarter. He's running pretty well now, Kevin. Yeah, I wasn't. I thought it was a leg cramp, but maybe it was a leg cramp and then turned into an ankle issue, too. And there's a handoff to Meacham, the wide side. He'll break tackles, one, two, three, and he'll fight close to a Sacred Heart first down. Taking it to the Pioneers 30, up to the 32-yard line. Finnemore brings him down. He forced a fumble in the first quarter. Buckdale recovered and later scored. Third and about three for Sacred Heart, down 24-17, clock moving, 6.36 left in the third. Now watch his trips formation to the near side. They can do it seven different things out of this. And Back they've done it tonight. Back to the left of Duke. And he'll go with a handoff. Beecham gets hit behind the line. He'll get forced backwards short of the first down. Got hit behind the line. And then Richard able to clean up that along with Abdullah Anderson. Nope, Colin Johnov. And boy, that was a big one. It's fourth and one. Looks like Sacred Heart's going to punt, but you got to be prepared for anything, Kevin. Absolutely. This is not the situation where I would expect them to try and uh, sneak one away and try and, uh, you know, hit the up back here. But. And the linebackers played well. I mean, Piles was the guy who hit Meacham, Meacham in the backfield, and then fellow linebacker Richard helped to corral him as Kassab will come out to punt. Gets a good snap this time, and he'll boot it with the right foot, and he'll kick it away from Johnov. He'll let it bounce, and it takes a bounce away from him, and a great bounce it is for Sacred Heart. It'll watermelon its way inside the Bison 25 and be downed at the 21. It's going to be Buckdell's worst starting field position tonight. I mean, they've started at the 13 of Sacred Heart twice, Kevin. But prior to this, their worst start offensively was their own 24. Well, this is a situation where right now you want to put together a good five-minute drive. So you're going to have to get, you know, first and uh, or second and uh, five or less. You want to get some five, six yards on first down to keep the clock moving and, more importantly, be able to easily move this change. We do have a media timeout right now with 7.36 remaining in the third. Bucknell leaning Sacred Heart by 7, 24 to 17. We're in the third quarter in Lewisburg at Christy Matthews and Memorial Stadium with 7.36 remaining. Bucknell leading by a slim seven-point edge, 24-17. Bison have the ball back. First and 10, moving left to right at the 22. Handoff to Floria, makes one man miss, but not a couple of others. His boy all over in that time was the defense for the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Bury in on that stop. Maybe a yard gain, not much else. We'll call it second and nine for Bucknell. Boy, this Sacred Heart defense does a pretty good job of swarming to the football. Almost, not as good though as last week when we saw with William and Mary. That is a defense that is very aggressive and it amazes me about how, not, how, how few times they were overly aggressive and got out of position. Without Polinski in, the Sacred Heart defense has gone to three down linemen instead of their normal four. It'll be a handoff to Freshnock. He comes against the green, cutting back at the 25, squirts forward to the 30 of Bucknell and will be dropped short of a first down at the 31. Coming up to make the stop is once again Barry for this Sacred Heart team. It'll be third and one for Bucknell leading by seven with 639 and counting third quarter. Yeah, this is the kind of third downs you have that are typically manageable. And, and Bucknell has struggled here today on third down. They're only three of nine on third down conversions coming into the second half. This will be a long one. Brand new starter at left guard, P.J. Barr, the freshman in the pistol. It'll be a handoff fresh knock. He's hit behind the line. He'll be dropped short of the first down. A lot of people don't like the pistol. And remember the Sacred Heart game in 2014 where they had a fourth and short, and they lined up five yards back where the quarterback um, got it, and then they ended up losing. Well, Fresh knocks five yards from the line of scrimmage, and he still needs to pick up two for a first down, and he's dropped a yard short of that. It's going to be fourth and a punt for Bucknell. Well, the idea is you can get a little bit of a, a momentum speed going when you hit the line and then find a hole. The problem was there were too many white helmets in behind the line of scrimmage. Here's Peachin again to punt. He gets another wow. shoot, just a shooting star punt. Drives O'Neal back. He slips at his 12, makes a man miss. Here he comes to the 15 and will finally be dropped at the 17. Chitty missed. Robinson, his fellow linebacker, did not. And O'Neal dropped down once again. This Sacred Heart team has had to go long field tonight. They've only started at their own 20 once 
every time it's been inside the 20. This is going to be the 17 as the Pioneers trail 24-17 with 5.32 left in the third. That's going to be unofficially about a 53-yard punt with about a 15-yard return. That's why Alex Peach and losing him last year was such a Absolutely. huge loss. And remember, he did everything last year. Pioneers with it at the 17, moving right to left in the third, down a touchdown. Duke in, in the pistol. I think Terry's back there now. Could be Meacham. It's Terry. Low snap. Duke tries a throw fly pattern. It's going to be broken up. So he throws it down the far sideline. And Con Johnoff, Colin Johnoff, step for step with Barney, who caught a long pass in the first half. But this one he bats away. Nice job by Colin. Good to have him back this year at second and 10, Sacred Heart. Yeah, don't need to be looking back at the quarterback at this level. You can just sit there and just put your hands up and use your helmet. <laughs> That's what and, Colin did. And, you know, whatever it takes. At the 17 of Sacred Heart, it'll be a delay handoff. And nothing doing that time. Great run support by the guy who just picked off his second pass this year, Aaron Brown. He'll drop Terry for a loss of one back at the 16. Third and 11 for Sacred Heart. Trailing Bucknell with five minutes left in the third, 24 to 17. He did his homework this week because he saw that immediately from film and just took off for the running back. Spocked the ball at the Sacred Heart 16-yard line, and there wasn't much of a block on him due by alignment. I don't even know if he, you could call it a block. <laughs> so Duke with Terry off to his left, two wide outs right, two left, third and 11. He'll go to pass. He has time. He'll throw it deep down the near side, and he had a man wide open at the 38. John off closing rapidly, though, against Ennis, but the pass was high and to the uh, sideline, the Sacred Heart sideline. Ennis couldn't come up with it, so... Good defensive stand for both Sacred Heart and now Bucknell. Another punt for the Pioneers, but field position may well have shifted in favor of the Bison up a touchdown. It's fourth and 11 Pioneers. Well, and the punts for the Pioneers have not have been adventurous. We'll say that. And remember one, it had been a high snap. That, this one, that, uh, that one could cost you two if it's a high snap this time. Or a touchdown. This is a good snap, though, and Kassab has time. He'll get it, and he'll try and kick away from Johnov to the boundary near side, and he will... Do so, but Johnov will catch this one and he'll sure handily bring it in at the 48 of Sacred Heart. So it'll be first and 10 Bison leading by seven with 439 left at the Pioneers 48. It looks like, uh, is that the punter getting up slow there and limping now? Wow, they're already on there. No, that's the uh, long snap. That's the long, oh, okay. Actually, no, I'm not even sure if it's a long snapper. <laughs> I can't see anything. We turned out the lights to get the bugs away. <laughs> well, you can't have everything, Doug. You're either going to eat bugs or you're going to be able to see. But I did like? eat one. <laughs> I think I got it out. I think it was, came out of my mouth. It was kind of like Noah and the Great Fish, you know. <laughs> or excuse me, Jonah and the Great Fish. Noah was another yeah, water thing. I think that might have been Whale and the Wide Receiver. <laughs> Speaking of Wales, here comes a pass out of the backfield. Coming all the way down the near side is the freshman Twyford. Got a block. Here he goes. Springing it to the 10, to the 5. There is a flag down at the 18. Oh, my goodness. That it could have been, been the, the first yeah. career touchdown reception for Twyford making his first start. Oh, I think it's going to be brought back. I think it's the block that you were talking about. It might have been just a little too good. We'll have to see on the replay. Here's our referee, Mr. Gwizinski. Boy, that was a great. I tell you, the play calling today has been phenomenal. Absolutely. It mixed it up very, very well. They've done a nice job of playing off different plays. And now watch this play. All the flow goes to the left side on the play fake. Then he swings it around to a wide open receiver. And there's the block in the back. Good call. Helmet was not in front. It was more in the back than it was in the side. Unfortunately, it was an excellent call. They were getting ready to move the sticks, but couldn't do that because they didn't pick up the, well, it's going to be first down. And the, the flag, where the flag was thrown at the 20, you move it back 15 yards, the 25, excuse me, move it to the 40. So it'll be first down again, just because you replay the down, but it's first and two. Yeah, and that's what the coaching staff here from Sacred Heart's talking about. First and two? Yeah, no, that's a good call. Here comes a handoff and nothing doing for Fresh Knock. Well, I tell you what, this Sacred Heart defense, Kevin, we said it was top 15 in the country in rush defense through three games. They have certainly done their mark for the most part tonight. Loss of one for Chad, the 41 of Sacred Heart 
It'll be second and three Bison with 4-11 and counting third quarter. Bucknell does lead the Pioneers 24-17. We talked about it right at the opening part of the game. This offensive line had to create some holes for the running game. They have not really been able to do that very well this year. The running game just hasn't clicked. And so many good running backs here at Bucknell, and they just have not been able to get anything started. Very inexperienced line, and a freshman making his first start in bar tonight. Play action. She steps up. He has a lot of room. He's going to tuck it in and run for a first down. Does a great job sliding and avoiding contact at the Sacred Art 30. They'll spot him at the 31. But, boy, the rush came all around him, and she, the sophomore making his first start this year, wisely just tucked the ball and ran. That was a perfect decision, an even better way to finish that, uh, finish that run, knowing when to slide so you don't end up getting an extra hit that you don't need. And I'll tell you what, that was a pretty solid slide. I mean, it wasn't bad. I, I, if I remember right, he played some high school baseball. Remember we had a conversation about that. He's in the shotgun. It'll hand off to DeFloria, and he on first and 10 will race it for eight down to the 22 of Sacred Heart. Bucknell trying to add to a seven-point lead with under four minutes left here in this third quarter. And we haven't seen Polinski this half. Do you think Bucknell's defense can wear down Sacred Heart without the big guy in the middle? Boy, I'll tell you, it's a, you can see that there have been some running plays that have been open in the middle of the field that I don't think were earlier in the game. That's a good observation, Doug. So, as Polinski went out late in the second quarter, it will be a second and one Bison at the Sacred Heart 21. Chi in the pistol. And here comes a pass. There'll be a flag down as there'll be a screen to Rand. Makes a man miss. Does fight for a first down. And will finally be wrapped up at the 16. But I think that Adam Alola may have cut up field a little too soon as he was in motion. And then, yeah, they're going to call a legal shift. May have actually been two men in motion at the same time. Illegal motion, offense number 88. Five yard penalty, replay second down. So that's the third penalty this half on Bucknell. Only had two in the first 30 and, minutes. And the worst part of that is he knew it the whole time because <laughs> he came walking back and he looked right at the flag and went, oh. Because he gets set, comes back the other way, steps and sets himself up, then leans forward just about a half a second before that ball is snapped, sets himself up then leans forward just about a half a second before that ball is snapped. And that lean forward and putting your foot out causes the flag. But I don't know if the officials were going to throw the flag at first, but the fans on this late. side, they go, hey, come on. And the coaches throw the flag. You're right. It the was a little did. late on the flag. Move the ball back to the Sacred Art 27 to make it second and six bison. Chi now under center. Go with a stretch handoff to Freshnock. He'll cut it up, but he'll run into a brick wall and only gain to the 25 and a half yard line. Uh, great defense for the Pioneers, but a Pioneer very slow in getting up. And he will be picked up. That was the guy who made the stop there and has made quite a few stops. Half yard line. Uh, great defense for the Pioneers, but a Pioneer very slow in getting up. And he will be picked up. That was the guy who made the stop there and has made quite a few stops out there. Uh, uh, Parvelous for but, the uh, Pioneers. Bucknell, that's not easy to say. Well, especially when I can't read anything because <laughs> the lights are out. <laughs> but Bucknell's offensive line needs to hang on to those blocks just a little bit longer. They're not. They're open holes for about a brief second, and then they collapse up. they, they got to get the drive block down a little bit. And I think Bucknell might have just gotten a free five there on Sacred Heart by the right side of the line popping up before they could get set. Well, the Bucknell offensive line, they're pleading their case. The Sacred Heart defensive line trying to plead their case, and we'll see who wins out with the official here. Who's the best debating offensive line? Uh, that's a good question. We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's going to be the Bucknell offensive line. They're clapping. Offside. Wow. Defense number 46. I think that's only the second penalty this half on Sacred Heart after going for six in the first half. That's a huge one, though. No, and, and that's the right. As we look at the replay, that's the right call because there are two guys that actually come up. One actually leans forward. The other takes a step forward, and he's the guy that gets called, the defense, the guy playing uh, outside linebacker or the defensive no, end. No, as a defensive end who was, was coming a, in for Polinski. Defensive end, yes. Who came in for Polinski. So that's an automatic first down at the 21 of Sacred Heart. Bucknell leads 24-17 with 70 ticks left in the third. Here's a run blitz, and Freshnock running against it goes from the right to the left side, and he'll get tripped up behind the line of scrimmage as just getting on his heels with another backup defensive player, Finelli, for the Pioneers. So it'll be a pickup of one, second and nine. The only thing is 
you know, if Bucknell gets any points at all, we may be three minutes into the fourth quarter here before <laughs> Sacred Heart even gets to touch the ball. Yeah. That's what I said. You needed one of these drives. By the way, Finelli comes from a safety position, and he got in the backfield really quick, timed it perfectly. The play might have developed a little slower, though. Second and nine at the 20 of Sacred Heart for Bucknell. Play action. Chi looks downfield. He's under pressure, throws it into traffic, and he'll be bailed out as Butler, the intended target at the 15, was surrounding the ball. Falls incomplete. Third and 10 now with 31 ticks left third period. Bison by seven over the Pioneers. I, I'm not, I mean, he checked down a couple of guys on that one. I'm not sure if that one was one that if you ask Coach Susan, he would have liked to have seen thrown. I think that's one he needs to, again, find the third row and the person standing there waving in the stands. Throw it to them. Maybe his family's here. It's family weekend. Whatever you need to do, just make sure they're the only ones that catch it. Third and nine, fresh knock in to the right of Chi. Could be a blitz by Sacred Heart at the 20. Here they come. Chi steps up. He has some room. He has a blocker. He'll run down the far sideline to the 10, to the 5. He'll have it first and goal inside the Sacred Heart 5. Second time this third quarter that the sophomore making his first start, John Chia Rolanzio, able to pick up a large run on a passing play at the three. It'll be first and goal by six. Now that was, again, a nice decision. There was absolutely nobody open. Great coverage downfield. The pocket collapses. He has a chance to dump it off to... Uh, I, yeah, yeah, it's fresh knock there. I couldn't see. I had to wait for him to turn. It had to dump it off there to fresh knock, but decides to run with it anyway and use fresh knock as a decoy. That'll be the end of this quarter as Bucknell will let the third period come to a close. And as we start things in the fourth, Bucknell knocking on the door. First and goal at the Sacred Heart three, leading 24 to 17. We'll come back in the fourth in just a moment. He'll you know, making his first start. And he's made up for it on a couple of big runs. He has an offset eye behind him. He's under center, hands off to Fresh Knock. He'll dance to the right, push the pile forward, and ladies and gentlemen, he's stopped at the one. <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to get in on I that I did search. too. You know, he got a nice little, and it's not an illegal, but they call it a crack block, where the wide receiver actually drifts in, and that was Haran that drifts in, and he just goes and pounds the defensive, uh, the uh, outside linebacker. Unfortunately, the defensive end was able to get in there and make the stop right at the goal line. See what the play call is here. You know, as big as Chia Rolanzio is, at 6'3", the sophomore could go with a quarterback sneak. Well, no, wait. It might be an over-the-top. Could be. Look who's in the backfield. Chad Freshnock, hand off to him. He'll punch for it, and he'll just walk into the end zone. Touchdown! Your Bucknell Bison. That looked a lot easier than what we expected, Kevin. I didn't know he could run through the end zone like that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him in short yardage run into the end zone. Usually he's leaping over top of everybody. Wise that he didn't. He gets his first touchdown of this game. And for the sophomore who hails from New Jersey, he has his third rushing touchdown this season. Big blocks by the offensive line there to make that happen. There's no way that hole should be that wide open at one yard. Big extra point attempt here for Burdick. Low snap. Haran gets it off the field turf surface. And somehow Haran holding it up allows Burdick to slice it through the uprights good. That's Bucknell three leads. times, Doug. That's incredible. And Haran gets low five by John Burdick. And yeah. Bucknell leads it 31-17. 14-19 left here in this ball game, And we're going to take another timeout. Once again, 31-17. Bucknell on top of Sacred Heart. But it took a lot of time, Kevin. We only have 14, 19 left in this ball game, and that over five minutes on that say, drive. That, was that a five or six minute drive? Look at the time of possession, 29.55 to 15.46 for Sacred Heart. Again, this is not an offense that worries about time of possession, but when you're not getting first downs and they only have seven of them, it really means that Bucknell has an opportunity to get more plays in, and they've done a good job of that with 61 plays to only 43 for Sacred Heart. Torres will boot this one. Remember, the only time Sacred Heart scored this second half to this point was on a kickoff return. He will kick it, and it will be taken by the guy who returned it 98 yards. He has it at the two. This is Ennis for Sacred Heart. He finds a seam to the 30. Penalty flag down. So he'll be wrapped up at the 31 by the Bisons, Chance Riley and Trey Johnson. There is a Sacred Heart player getting up a little slowly. He'll be helped up. I think he's the guy who's going to get called for the hold. And, and, and that's another flag that is way out in front of the run again. Here's our official Jeffrey Shizutsky. So Bucknell 
We'll see Sacred Heart get the ball back down 14, and that was the guy who was injured too, the person who was called for the hole. 31-17. Bucknell and the first game of the year here at home against Maris scored 45, two touchdowns by the defense, one on a fumble recovery in the end zone, and then the other one, of course, came off of the interception return by John Off. But uh, Sacred Heart, this is their second best starting field position here. That's at their 21. I don't mean to take anything away from Sacred Heart, but the 17 points they scored, Bucknell really put them in position to score those points. Now Duke to pass, throws it on a dump off pattern and a man breaking a tackle. It's gonna be O'Neill. He will be hit at the 24 of Sacred Heart, but he bounces off of that would-be tackle and takes it up to the 28 before Johnoff pushes him out of bounds. Pickup of eight, second and two. And that's one thing that Sacred Heart's not out of a game because they do have that hurry-up offense. Tell you what, Ricketts does a nice job here making a downfield block when he realizes the play is coming his way. That he turns around and squares up and makes a solid block. And off to Terry, and on second and three, he'll pound forward for the first down to the Sacred Heart 32. Bison 31, Pioneer 17, 14 minutes remain in this ball game here in Lewisburg. I talked about it earlier. AA has had a quiet game as far as what we've been talking about, but he is actually making it so other players can make a tackle and have caused some penalties. Duke to pass. He's going to be flushed out of the pocket. He can run. Here he goes, has a blocker in front of him. He'll take it to the 35, break a tackle at the 36. Fight to the 39, he'll be short of a first down by four yards is coming up to make the stop was Loro that time for Bison and it'll be second and four for Sacred Heart, no huddle. Now, Abdullah that time gets double teamed by the guard tackle again and that frees up other guys to come in and make the play. Pickup of seven though, it'll be a handoff. Terry will break a tackle, push the pile forward to 40. He'll have a first down to the 42 where it'll be forward progress will be stopped. And Sacred Heart on the move here, down by 14 with 13 minutes remaining. You know, your defense has had a really, really long rest now. The problem is you cannot let Sacred Heart march this ball downfield. Need a turnover, and Buckdale has picked off a couple of Duke passes, also gotten a fumble and a bad snap on a punt. See if the Bison can generate another turnover. First and 10, Pioneers at the Sacred Heart 42. Duke back to pass, has time, floats it downfield. Man wide open, it's gonna be caught by Barney at the Bison 25. Struggling his way inside the 15. Johnoff will drag him down finally at the 11 yard line, but that'll be first and 10 for the Pioneers at the Bucknell 11. Again, the, another Sacred Heart receiver gets behind the corners. That's so and unusual. That, and it happened a lot in the end of the first half doesn't happen against Buckdale's defensive backs too often at the 11, first and 10. Terry to the right, he'll get the handoff and he'll break a tackle at the five, touchdown, Sacred Heart. Too easy. Way too easy, 12-13 remaining. Buckdale just scored to make it 14 two minutes ago and just like that, the Pioneers worked through this top 15 defense for Bucknell as if they were made of butter on a very warm, sticky night. And it, well, it is that, I tell you that, but again, Great lead block there. Boy, out to the uh, offensive lineman, the fifth year senior. He gets out five yards downfield to make the block that actually puts him in the end zone. See if Bucknell can block an extra point. They did last week, but nope, this one will go through the uprights good. And the Pioneers pull within 7 31 to 24. That was a six play drive, Kevin. And I mean, moving it, trucking it downfield, 79 yards was this Sacred Heart team picking up three first downs in the process. So with 12-13 remaining, Buckdale leads at 31-24. Start of the third quarter. And then the Bison able to score 14 straight, including a pick of quarterback, Heaven Duke of the Pioneers. Now the Pioneers go six plays, 71 yards, 79 yards, excuse me, and able to score on a run by Eli Terry. There's a squib kick that Buckdale Stephon Green will stumble around, pick up, and fight his way back to the 20. Stefan looking downfield where his blockers were, Kevin. He forgot to pick up the ball. He finally got a grapple hold on it on the six-yard line. Is able to run 14 more yards before Johnson brought him down at the, officially at the 21 of Bucknell. That's one of Bucknell's worst starts in terms of field position tonight. You know, from time to time, though, you'll see somebody bobble a ball like that, and all of a sudden, Guys get out and break down. The, the uh, kickoff team, coverage team, breaks down out of their lanes. Sacred Heart doing a nice job of not over committing to the run, to the runner, rather. Adam Alola in at fullback. Offset eye behind John Chia Rolanzio under center. 
First and 10 at the 21. Here's a run blitz, and somehow DeFloria spun away from a would-be run blitzer, able to take it for four yards to the Bison 25 before being pushed down. It's another backup on the field for the Pioneers. Raddick that time. It'll they be second really and six cool. Bison. They are playing a lot of players here tonight, Doug. Well, yeah, it's such a humid night, no breeze at all to speak of. Well, you know, and Coach Susan talked about it with you in the pregame. This is probably the warmest night that any of these teams have played. Bucknell, fortunately, had a warm night last week being down in, in uh, Virginia. Second and six. Back to the pistol. Handoff right side to Floria. Struggles for a first down as he breaks a tackle at the Bison 29. He'll take it to the 32 before being wrapped up by Marvelous, I believe, that time. And Thompson, and it'll be first and 10. Bison leading 31 24. 11 14 and counting in this ball game. It'll be at the Bison 32. This has been the type of game that Bucknell has not been able to have this year where they are in a close game, they have the lead, and they have the opportunity to just make the clock go tick. And they have not been able to effectively do that this year. A lot of that because of the young offensive line. Here's a quick screen to Haran, has one man to beat. He can't beat him. Great open field tackle by that guy. Over on the near side of the field is coming up to make the stop. It's the defensive back. I can't read it at all. <laughs> it's uh. Quick kill, I think. I can't read it, but it's second and nine. Pick up of wood. <laughs> and he does a nice job of coming up on the ball. This is one of those plays It's kind of a long handoff. And if your receiver makes the man miss, great. If he doesn't, you still get a yard or two out of it, and it's like a running play. It was Whitaker, by the way. Second and nine, Bison leading by seven in the fourth quarter. And here's a run wow. blitz, and it'll stop Joey DeFloria. No gain. In fact, he'll lose a yard. Well, no, they'll get him back to the line of scrimmage. Third and nine with 10.09 remaining. Bison 31, Sacred Heart 24. And to be quite honest, this is the first time this year in four games now that Sacred Heart has been in this kind of a game. Absolutely. And that time the defense not only had a linebacker in there, but the defensive tackle was in there too. And your defensive tackle making that play like that, you can't have that on a regular basis. And Buckdale will come up with a big pass here. We'll see. Third and nine. Could be a blitz. She's going to roll all the way to the right, throw on the move. It'll be caught, but short of the first down at the 35. It's Adam Alola. Had a few catches in the first half, and he'll be dragged out of bounds at the 36. So it'll be fourth and six, and Stony Brooks had a big win last week against this team, Sacred Heart, 45-7. But the Pioneers down only seven right now with 9.27 left, and Sacred Heart will get the ball back with Ennis back there to return the punt by Peach. Peach needs to know one of those 70 yarders. Maybe a fumbled punt. Well, that'd be all right, too. Peachum will get the ball loose, and he gets a long hanging kick. Here comes Ennis. He has it the 30, and he'll be dropped at the 35. He hit a brick wall there. Great coverage downfield by Buckdell's kick coverage guys. Fletcher came up to make the stop. The 35, it's 65 yards to tie this game up, or at least pull within one. For Sacred Heart, you got to think they're going to go no huddle here too, Kevin. Doug, this might be one of, yeah, I would guarantee that too, yeah, but I, I, this might be one of the best field positions that Sacred Heart's had all game. This is going to be the best start tonight, the 35. They've wow. had a couple at the 21, 22, and that's been it. Most of them have been inside the 15. Lots of receivers in this pattern. First and 10, three wide outs to the right. Duke now gets a play change with Terry in the backfield with him. A sultry night here. Central Pennsylvania. Sultry, that's a good word. <laughs> Here comes a handoff. Terry will dance his way to the 36 and then fight to the 37 and a half and be pushed backwards as Fletcher comes up to make the stop along with piles for Bucknell. Yeah, I like the call there. You stretch everybody out, you spread them all out with four receivers, trips to the wide side of the field. You should be able to get up the middle of the field, but again, front line of, the, of Bucknell doing this job. I haven't seen Duke run the ball much. He averaged seven yards per carry. He's only run the ball when he's had to, really. Second and seven, he'll pass this time. Has a man open, it's going to be caught by Nimbert. He will break free for a first down. Is coming up for us. Steal on an interception was Lauro, but Nimbert 6-1, Lauro 5-10. He outlept him, and he'll take it to the 48 first and 10 for this Sacred Heart team. And the Pioneers down seven in the fourth quarter. Lauro made a calculated gamble, but going up for it, he really wasn't going to be able to make the play on the receiver. And here's a run 
up the middle for four yards. The Bison 48 is Meacham back in for Sacred Heart. Puckdale 31, Sacred Heart 24, 807 left. It's the closest these two teams have been in what is now the third meeting ever. Bucknell not getting any time to sub right now. Second and eight, handoff Meacham, tries to catch the corner, does, but he was kind of stumbling and he'll gain nothing. Good job by Blake Fletcher. He had to fight off a big lineman to be able to stand him up and drop down. Then there's an injured Bison on the backside of the play. And don't know if that was from a cup block or if it's a cramp, but Looks like John Hunt, who is holding his right leg. Could be a cramp, we'll yeah, see. Kinda, he's kind of acting like it's a leg cramp there. Remember, the John was the guy who got that run against Holy Cross last home game for the Bison off the punt. Um, and it bounced off one of the up backs, Mark Piles, and then it went on the ground and Hunt picked it up and ran for a first down. Buckdale couldn't score. Oh, he, well, that was kind of a undercut there on the block. So it might not have been a leg cramp. He, he kind of got cut down right just about the knee. That's almost the type play Alex Jordan broke his leg at Charleston Southern. That was downfield more. You remember that play? Yes, I do. And there wasn't a flag on that one. No. There may have. I mean, now you have the tackle box where you can go with a block, low block. That's that and, was and pretty he, low. And there was only one involved. There wasn't two players involved. So that's the other thing. It's nice to see him get up under his own power and jog off, though. It'll be the sixth play of this drive with 7.46 remaining. Bison holding on to a narrow seven-point edge over Sacred Heart, 31-24. Third and six. This is a big play, really third and seven, I guess. Big play for both the defense Absolutely. and the offense. Both teams needing a win here tonight. Don't want to fall to two and two for Sacred Heart or one and three for Bucknell. Third down, seven. Play Push. clock is just underway here. Especially with Monmouth in the waiting in the wings. That's for sure. Undefeated Monmouth, I believe. Third down, the crowd getting into it for the first time tonight. And a man moved! And the crowd may have caused this offensive line, a veteran offensive line, everybody's veteran for Sacred Heart, to do the false start. Well, I'd like to, I hope we have a shot of that because that must have been like a flinch or something because he might have just lifted his finger off the turf. But man, everybody on the defensive line pointing right at him. And the back judge, I think, is the one that throws, the, or the umpire, rather, is the one that throws the flag. Terry Burke, our director. Let's see if we get a look at it. Replay by Sam Dixon. Oh, it's, a, it's the center that hops. Wow. You're over the ball, son. <laughs> Third and 11 now for Sacred Heart. Down a touchdown with 7.08 and counting. Fourth quarter. Duke to pass. Has a pocket. Throws a deep. Man is open. It's going to be complete at the Bison 25, as that was the play they threw to the tight end. This time it was Ennis who had the long kickoff return, start the third, and he couldn't come up with it. And it looks like Sacred Heart will punt and try and give Bucknell a tough starting position. It's a good thing that pass was not lobbed in because he had an opportunity there, went right down man-to-man -man coverage, split the two safeties as well. But I'll tell you, it was a great job defensively to get back and get a hand on the football. Ben Richard just reached out. That was a time where he actually looked back to see where the ball was. Otherwise, the receiver in us would have caught it, as opposed to Johnov earlier in this second half, where he just kind of face guarded. I snap, but Kaspar gets oh a boy. shanked punt. Will it take a sacred hard bounce? It does inside the 30 and it will roll to the 28 but boy could have been a lot better you i'm sure that the sacred heart staff coach nafri who has been there as a head coach six years this is sixth year but he's been there for 24 years linebacker coach for a long time and didn't he see coach the year twice when he led his team to back-to-back -back northeast conference titles including a 16 nothing win over buckdale here at Christie in 2013, but remember in 2014, Bucknell paid him back as they ended up winning 34 to 20 out in Connecticut. We have a media timeout with 6.49 remaining. Bucknell gets it back, leading by seven. First and 10, Bison leading 31-24 over visiting Sacred Heart. 6.49 remaining in the fourth quarter. Bison have it at the Bucknell 28, moving right to left. In the pistol, it'll be a handoff to Floria. Run blitz on, he'll try and eke out a yard, and that's about it, the 28-yard line. Joey, who has a couple of rushing touchdowns tonight, brought down by the linebacker back up. I think it was actually lineman Artis. And there's another injured Sacred Heart player. We've seen a lot of Sacred Heart injuries tonight. And one of them has been big. Polinski, remember, never returned. And, and some of these appear to be uh, injury injuries. Some of these appear to be 
heat-related injuries, leg cramps. I, I can tell you right now, there's probably a lot of pickle juice on the sidelines for tonight's game. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Yes. When the love of the game, <laughs> this is going to be impossible to read. When the love of the game <laughs> takes you to town, you're guaranteed to win. Hey, thank you. With the Hampton Inn by Hilton and Lewisburg. Hampton's playbook includes a clean and fresh Hampton bed and a complimentary hot breakfast. Just go to lewisburgpa.hamptoninn.com to reserve your room today. The injured player being helped off is Brandon Slade, so a backup cornerback will come on. By the way, the Wise Center for the Performing Arts is a proud sponsor of Bucknell Football. The Wise Center's season offers 30 professional events, including world music, Americana, classical, and family discovery performances. For more information, visit bucknell.edu, Wise Center. And now, the lights go out. <laughs> But we're not done. No, we're not. Second and nine bison at the Buckdale 29. The lights in the booth go out. The lights in the stadium are fine. Just don't want to panic anybody. Good point. 31-24, Buckdale over Sacred Heart, facing a second and nine with the clock down to 6-12. This ball game. Stretch hand off to Floria. Neil fight to the 30, and that's it. Boy, this, even without Polinski, this Sacred Heart defense has lived up to the reputation of being top 15 rushing defense in all of FCS coming into tonight's Buck game. Bucknell has cracked the 100-yard mark in rushing, but with, even with that carry, it's barely 120. Wow. Third and eight facing Gio Rolanzio making his first start this season. He started the game last year. Now, again, play clock's at 15, actually 17. You have time, let it run down. Don't force a throw here. Flory off to the left of the shotgun quarterback, Chi, on a third and eight. The Bison 30. Here's a blitz, picked up. Now Chi runs off to his right. Now he's going to be dragged down for loss. What a great tackle in the open field out there. He's coming up to make the stop for this team was... Uh, Ackerman, uh, something like that. Number 47, 47. I can't tell you what his name is. I can't read anything. Yeah, pun for Beechin. It's Ackerson. Ackerson. Yes. Okay, I thought that's what it said, but I couldn't tell. <laughs> Hate to give a number. Boy, what a great open field tackle. Not that she would have gotten the first down. He was retreating, but still. Second sack of uh, Chi tonight. Well, and the Pioneers have done a great job in terms of sacks coming in. They had a sack in six straight games. Of course, now they have seven straight. And that one's going to go five yards further back. And it looks like Bucknell, which tried to get a false start in a, or a delay a game in the late first half. That penalty was declined. This one will be taken on a false start by Sacred Heart to move the ball inside the vice of 25. Spotted at the, what, 17, 18-yard line? 18. I think 17. Uh, yeah, I think 18. You're right. I was going to say 17, but he stopped it. 31 24, Bucknell. 4.43 left, and ever dangerous O'Neill with his heels at the Sacred Heart 32. Time to use those magic shoes. <laughs> Alex Beechin wearing those blue dancing shoes. Oh, low snap. Gets a worm burner off the turf and gets a high hanging kick. Here is O'Neill at the 35. He bobbles the ball, picks it up, and he takes it to the 40. Boy, the ball bounced wow. right back into his break bread basket he was dropped right there thank you mr turf i guess uh, that took a turf bounce and it popped right back up into the chest could be the drive of the game for either team 434 remaining and boy such a high kick that o'neill just had to go through his bread basket he got it back at the 40 39 officially Gut check time now for the Bucknell defense and for the Sacred Heart offense for that matter. No doubt, down seven. Three wide outs right, Duke to pass left. He has a man open, it'll be caught for first down at the Bison 45. Got it to Barney, dropped by Riley, but boy, they have really caused harm to the Bucknell D. They're finding, they're getting behind the corner and in front of the safety coverage deep. Finding that little soft spot, and I'll tell you what, Duke is delivering the ball right when he needs to. First and 10, Terry off to the right. It'll be a play action, pump fake, going deep. Here's a pass, man, wide open. It's going to be touchdown, Sacred Heart, Nibbar. Bit on the pump fake. And Buckdale's defensive secondary has been blistered here in this second half. And really, from the second half of the second quarter on. Actually, yeah, I was going to say from the second half, almost the end of the second half, or a uh, second quarter. Uh, the, right there, though, is the success of playing off of successful plays. Sacred Heart have done those little out patterns, those little wide receiver screens. The pump fake throws everybody, and then the open man downfield. 
And there's the all important extra point with 4-12 left in the Bison holding on to a one point edge for Urea. And long count, penalty flag down. The extra point goes through the uprights good. So I'm thinking Sacred Art will just decline and take the tie game here. So we're all tied at 31 with 4-12 remaining. That was the longest pass this year for the senior Kevin Duke out of Wappinger Falls, New York. As his long prior was 31, that was 48 yards, his third touchdown passing this year. That was a two-play drive, Kevin, two plays, and it was 54 yards. And he heaves that ball, Doug, from his back foot and I mean, throws it just a whisker. There was pressure on, to say the least. And every time it's been, I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen a football game with this kind of momentum to where one team <laughs> breaks out to a big lead. Bucknell led 17-0 with a start of a third quarter and a 98-yard kickoff return by Ennis and Sacred Heart. They tied it up 17-all, but then Bucknell scored 14 straight points. Can the Bison score a touchdown here in a tie game, 31-all, with a little over four minutes remaining in regulation? Big Moe's been bouncing from sideline to sideline like a beach ball. Got that right. It's warm enough to be a beach out here. <laughs> so I'm going to go downstairs where it's cooler. I'll see you later. <laughs> I don't believe you. Kevin heading down for our post game show. Sacred Heart will kick this one off, and after this kickoff, we'll take 10 seconds for station identification. Here's the kickoff by O'Dowd. It's going to be taken by Donov, and he's going to lose yards. He'll be stopped at the 13-yard line. First time tonight, Johnov comes in. He gets up slowly, and the guy who brought him down also getting up very slowly for this Sacred Heart team. Is, that is going to be for the Pioneers, Twissant. I had to turn the lights on. I'm just going to eat bugs the rest of the way. I'm afraid I can't see a thing up here. At the 13-yard line, Bucknell will have it in a 31-all game with 4.07 remaining and the chance of let's go defense down below us by the Sacred Heart faithful. Chiaralanzio up under his center. Pat Finn, offset eye behind him, hand off to Floria. He will break it to the 12, to the 13, to the 15, up to the 17. Four being wrapped up and dropped, coming up to make the stop. Going to be Denzel Williams. Another backup out there for Sacred Heart. Pick up though of four. Second and five. Second and five for Bucknell. Bison need a field goal. Haven't had a game winning field goal since beating Lafayette in overtime here in 2014. Chi in the pistol. He'll take the snap, hand off. There's DeFloria breaking a free. He'll have eight, he'll have nine. He'll have a first and 10 bison. So he'll ramble off the right side to pick up to the 25 yard line. Wrestled down to this field turf surface here by Delvon Aris. Davon Aris for the Secret Art Pioneers. First and 10, it's DeFloria. Gained some yards here last we checked. Joey had 66 net yards. Clock down to 306. Both teams have all three timeouts. Sacred Heart 31, Bucknell 31. The 25, low snap out of the shotgun. Chi steps up in the pocket, heaves one downfield. There's holding, but no flag at the 40 yard line. He intended it for Haran, who is asking, pleading for a foul and wagging his finger up in the air is Aaron Thompson. But boy, oh boy, that could have easily been a hold on Thompson and the Pioneers, but instead it's second and 10, but not a bad time to go deep there as Bucknell now will have to pick up successive five yard plays at the 25 yard line. She did a good job to heave it. And boy, there was crabbing all the way down the field that time. And it was DeFloria who actually was the intended target. He was pleading for a foul. She in the shotgun goes with a play action. I'll throw it out of the backfield. It's not a good play, and it'll be an incomplete pass. The Sacred Heart fans, the pass was intended at the 20, thought it was a pass behind the line, which would have been a loose ball fumble, but it was a forward pass. And because it was a forward pass, it was incomplete. 
So it'll be third and 10, Buck Dillon. It stops the clock with 2.48 left in a 31-31 game. Buck Dillon, Sacred Heart. Pioneers lost 45-7 last game at Stony Brook. Buck Dillon lost last week at William & Mary, 30-9 and 20 to nothing at home. Fifth play of this drive at the 25. Third and 10. Chi in the shotgun, two wide outs left. Here's an all out blitz, it's picked up. Chi throws, fires, it's caught by a ram, but it'll be pulled down short of the first down at the 31. Jack had to come back to the ball as he does so well. And now Sacred Heart's going to burn one of its three remaining timeouts here. A 31 all game, the Pioneers have yet to lead in this contest here. And we have a timeout by Sacred Heart, by the way. We want to thank the fine folks at Caldwell Banker for sponsoring our Patriot League Bison scoreboard. You can visit them at 331 Market Street in Lewisburg. Let them show you what team spirit is all about. Earlier today, the Bucknell women's soccer team got a big 4-0 victory over American to go 2-0 in the Patriot League. Congratulations to Coach Kelly Cook's women's soccer squad. Middlesworth potato chips from Middlesburg, Pennsylvania. They've been a local favorite chip since 1942. Whether you're a fan of their barbecue, sour cream and onion, salt and vinegar, or jalapeno, Middlesworth has a chip for you. Next time you go to the grocery store, grab a bag of Middlesworths. And Creighton Freight Plus, located on Route 15 in Lewisburg, it's your source for notary, instant registration, title transfers, FedEx and UPS shipping, copies, faxing, scanning, and so much more. Locally owned and operated for over 25 years, Creighton Freight Plus. Well, here's a fourth and three, and Bucknell will punt it. Alex peaching out there. O'Neill standing at the Sacred Heart 25. Good snap. Alex gets this one high. Wobbly. No fair catch. O'Neill, no, he will call for a fair catch. He did it early. We'll get it at the 24 yard line. So it'll be first and 10. Sacred Heart may have passed the ball silly on Bucknell. As the last update we had on Duke, 12 of 25, 222. He has two TDs now, and so it's well over 222 yards. And with 231 left, 31-31 is the score. Sacred Heart picked fifth in the preseason NEC poll. Bucknell picked fifth in the preseason Patriot League poll. First and 10, Pioneers. Back to pass Duke. He'll throw, and it'll be incomplete. Tried to get a leaning Innes at the 30-yard line, but he was step for step with the linebacker, Mark Piles, who's had a great game for the Bison. Second and 10, stops the clock with 2.28 left. A couple of quick scores for you, Doug. Princeton leads Lafayette 38-17 in the fourth, and Penn State over Iowa in the second, 5-0. Sounds like a double off the wall for the Nittany Lions. <laughs> Here's Duke with another down and out. It'll be caught by Barney, who caught the long pass. He'll break a tackle. He'll take it for a first down. Buckdale again, missed tackles. He was caught for about a five yard gain, but he'll break it for 12 and a first to the 40. And remember, there was a long field goal at the end of the first half, 34 yards by Friaria, and gave Sacred Heart its first points. And they only need a field goal with 2.16 left. Back is a run by Terry. He'll break tackles to the 40 and finally be dragged down at the Sacred Heart 43. Keep the clock going. Two timeouts left for the Pioneers. Need a field goal to win in a 31 all game with 203 remaining. Man, Buckdale needs a turnover here, Kevin. The strange thing though about this offense, though, it doesn't play for overtime. It just plays to attack. May have tacked this half. Back to pass Duke has all day. Throws it. Man is open. It's going to be incomplete. Marine let Barney get a step on him, but the pass by Duke well high. And you know, that's one thing we haven't seen much of. A lot of pressure here tonight as Bucknell has not had a sack on Duke yet. Third and seven to be a great time for a Bucknell sack here, Kevin. Up until this point, I don't think, he, actually he has not been sacked tonight. And this is one of the teams that has the fewest sacks in college football given up. 148 remaining, 31-31. Sacred on on third and eight, back to pass. Duke finds it. And it'll be stopped short of the first down. He lost it, incomplete. Doug. Oh, you're right. Ennis dropped the ball. The official says he got it. No, he did not. And they're going to say a completion. It's going to be fourth and one. And what will Sacred Heart do here at the 49? They're going to go for it. That ball was loose. And they're going to go with the quarterback sneak. And Duke will. He didn't get it. I don't think he did get it. He didn't. He stopped on this, this side of the 50. The official 
comes out. They may have to bring the chains out, but where the ball is spotted, I don't think he has the first down. He had to get right to midfield, Kevin. I think they have to bring the chains out for this, but I don't think he got it. And I'll tell you what, I had a great angle on that reception. That ball pops out when he's on the ground. He did not get a completion on that one. But I'll tell you what, the official was in a position that he couldn't see it because he was screened out. And, and there was nobody else in a better spot. And Sacred Heart went quickly, even though they don't have a replay right. that they could have used tonight. So they'll bring the chains out. It's either going to be first and 10 Sacred Heart or first and 10 Bison. He's short by about a half a yard. They stretch it out, and it is first and 10 Orange and Blue. Momentum has now shifted again. 126 left. Buckdell 31, Sacred Heart 31, and the Bison have it, Kevin at the Sacred Heart 49. All of a sudden, this sideline has just been energized, and the fans over here are on their feet. Buckdell has all three timeouts. What a big defensive stand for the Bison. Are you surprised Sacred Heart went for it? No, not at all, because they thought they had an opportunity to catch Bucknell on their heels, and they've been getting yard after yard after yard on the ground. I think it was a good call. It was just weird because he was under center for the first time tonight. Buckdale will get it at the 49 of Sacred Heart, needing a field goal. Chiro Alonzio hands off to Floria. He'll stretch forward to the 48, fight to the 47. Buckdale has all three timeouts, won't use one here though. Now here's what you have to remember with a quarterback who doesn't have a ton of experience. He does not have to force the ball here. You do not have to score. If worst thing is you go to overtime, you go to overtime and take your chances. Yeah, in this situation, the first half, Kevin, he threw a pick six. Exactly. Second and eight bison. Here's an all-out blitz. Chi throws, and it's incomplete. The blitz shook him up and knocked him down. It was intended for Butler at the 42. If he would have caught it, he would have been into the races, but it stops the clock with a third and eight bison. 31-31 with Sacred Heart. 55 ticks left in regulation here but, in Lewisburg. But that's a good pass because that pass is basically into the ground at the ankles of the receiver, and if the receiver doesn't get it, nobody else does either. The Sacred Heart blitz again here, Kevin. I'm sorry, what was that? You, I just cut out. Do you think that Sacred Heart will blitz again? Oh, I think you do right here at third and eight, no question. At the 47, oh, a guy almost jumped off sides. He got back for Sacred Heart. Here they come. Chi steps up, has time, throws it over the middle. It's going to be caught, caught, caught! Adam Alola inside the 25 at the 22. He caught a touchdown against Lafayette two years ago. That was his second biggest grab all, of his career. All three timeouts yet. Clock stopped when you set the ball. Now, you've got man-to-man -man on the near side with Haran and an advantage with Haran's height. Back to Baz Chi. Here's a delay blitz. He gets hit as he fires in the end zone. It is. Touchdown! No, he hold on. No. Adam Alola couldn't hold on in the end zone. He was falling backwards, and he got knocked down. And then Chi Alonzio is still down on the ground as they blitzed him. And at the 22-yard line, when you only need a field goal, are you surprised they went for it all because Chi is on his back now. Kevin here with Buckdale tied with Sacred Heart 31, all with 38 ticks left in regulation. I, I think that's a risk that you can afford to take because you're, you've got three timeouts. You threw it into the end zone. If it gets picked off, it only comes out to the 20. You just need to tell your receivers, don't let anybody pick this one off. And right now, Mew is taking snaps on the sidelines and firing the ball to one of his backup receivers to warm up. She is really, he's on his back and he's in a lot of pain making his first start and he may have. I think he might have gotten the wind knocked yeah, out of him the I way agree. he's acting. You're right. He kind of got up real quickly and, and he acted as yeah. if he's trying to catch his breath. I'm watching pretty sure that's what it is. Watching the replay in the Patriot League Network, Kevin, Adam Alola had it in his hands, but he had to turn to his right to get the ball. As he did, he falls down in the second big play this half by, by uh, Aaron Thompson. Uh, the defensive back knocked the ball loose right as he hit. Now, Chi is getting up. He's going to have to come out for one play. John Burdick, you'd have to think for a game-winning kick, his long this year for John Burdick for Bucknell, as Matt Mew is warming up on the Bucknell sideline, his long this year was 33. Burdick did kick a 30-yarder as Matt will come in because Chi Rolanzio walks off under his own power. But for a career, his career long was 38, so that means you have to get 
uh, to oh, about more. the 20-yard line. <laughs> Matt went and gave Matt Mew gave Cheery a hug, and actually ended up she ended up tripping <laughs> as he was coming out. It was it was completely incidental. They could both kind of smiled at each other when it happened. Now here's another key, Doug. You do not have to throw the ball here on every down. You've still got three timeouts. No, but you may want to get the ball in the middle of the field for right, a right foot exactly. Kicker. Exactly. You comes in for his first snap tonight. He's going to go handoff right, and there'll be a loss of yards as DeFloria tried to dance to the middle of the field. He'll drop. He dropped back at the 25. Buckdale will take a timeout with 33 ticks left. Buckdale will have two timeouts remaining here, but a loss of two. It'll be third and 12 for Bucknell, and I don't know if Chi will be able to come back in. And You know, Burdick hit a big field goal to win uh, a two-minute drill on Tuesday night. Can the senior and we talked with him and we had him on earlier if you recall kevin in our meet a bison segment a couple of games ago and i asked him what about a game-winning kick and he goes that is what we all dream about and the senior hasn't had an opportunity but old 93 he could do it here tonight doug g's coming back in although they're kind of hiding him right now but, all right i just gave it away <laughs> <laughs> but, sacred hearts coaches are listening so 33 ticks left, Buckdale 31, Sacred Heart 31. Ball just a hair inside oh. the 25, he, third and 12 for Bucknell. What would the Bison and Coach Acosta call here? Sorry, Doug, he wanted to come in, but they did not let him come in. I'll change that up. He was, he was trying to plead his case to come in. I thought he might have won it. If Buckdale could get a first down here, Kevin, I think that Burdick could win it on a kick. Here's Absolutely. a late lineman coming on for Sacred Heart. Third and 12, Bucknell. Have to get it to the 13 of Sacred Heart. Blitz coming. Here's Mew rolling the pocket out to his right. Plants, fires, penalty flag down. That could be horrible because that would push it back 10 more yards yeah. you get, if you take the hold, and I guess you would here yeah, as absolutely. opposed to decline it. Absolutely. you got to take it on this one. So okay. now it'll still be third down, but it's going to be third and about 23. And that called against the Bison's Josh Yoder. And boy, Matt Mew has been put in a very difficult spot here. 31-31, clock down to 28 ticks left in regulation. Well, Both teams with two timeouts, move the ball back to the 35. One nice thing, though, Doug, is you do have an experienced quarterback here. You don't have a quarterback who's just coming in and hasn't taken a snap or two all year long. Here's a guy that has taken quite a few snaps, taken quite a few snaps through the summer months as well, or through August as well. So you have a veteran back there with some experience. Third and 22. Mew in the shotgun to Flory out to his left. They have run the wheel route so many times. Let's see if it's open here on third and 22 at the Sacred Heart 35. Tied at 31. 30 seconds left. Mew has time. Throws a crossing pattern. It's caught by Iran. He'll be tackled at the 29. And that will stop the clock as Bucktail takes. Nope. No, he, the they're going to go. take the timeout with about five to go, I would say. So in this case, you're going to put it in the right yep. foot of John Burdick, the senior. That's exactly right. Joe Susan sitting right here by the headlines, been waiting, and there's five on the clock. He's going to take it down to about two now, and that's where he tolls the timeout. It's going to be a 48-yard kick. He was able to get the 48-yarder in Tuesday night's practice. He was just able to sneak it in. Now it was at the goalpost to our right, the closed in. He'll be kicking it to the goalpost to our left, and John did get a field goal in the first half going to our left, I do believe. Maybe it was to the right, but whatever the case, this is going to be on fourth down and 16, a probably about a 48-yard kick. Do you think John has the legs? You know, when he had missed one earlier in practice Tuesday, Kevin, and he said, I'm going to have to do more uh, squats. And I talked with Tom Adams, his long snapper, who you see on the Patriot League Network right now, number 98, and he said he will do a lot of squats tonight, I promise you. I'll tell you right now, he is dead center. I'm behind the goalpost now. He is dead center right on the goalpost, on the uh, uh, right right down the middle. The thing you got to worry about, remember, the snaps have been questionable today. Haran has had to do some great holds. 46-yard kick. Holder is Haran. And there'll be a timeout taken by Sacred Heart. 
Pioneers will have one more timeout left, and you got to think here with just two seconds remaining in regulation in a 31-all game that it's going to be another timeout upcoming for Coach Knopfrey and the Pioneers too, Kevin. Yeah, raise your hand if you're surprised by that. No. I don't see any hands up. Okay, we're good. The only time I'm surprised, <laughs> did you hear what James Franklin did in a 56-0 game last week against Georgia State? <laughs> no, I don't think I did, actually. They were going for a field goal just to get some points in the last two seconds of regulation. Down 56 nothing to Penn State. He calls a timeout to get his block unit on. They did block the field goal <laughs> to preserve the shutout. But come on, James. <laughs> you don't need that. Hey, listen. You, Joe Susan says you play to the final seconds. <laughs> you know that as well as anybody. All right. Here's Burdick. He had always dreamed of a game-winning kick. He has his chance now with two ticks remaining in regulation. Got to get it high enough, but it'll be a 46-yard kick. Ball square in the middle of the field. Going to the goal post to our left. Will Sacred Heart take another timeout? They will. Will it ice, John? The snap was already taken, and it was blocked, but because of the timeout, Burdick will get another opportunity. Does that help Sacred Heart or hurt him? Uh, I'm sorry, Doug. I was I was watching there, the, uh, listening to the official. The timeout was well before the ball was snapped, so uh, it actually kind of backfired for him in the long run here. Exactly. I mean, Coach Noffrey, now you know he can't take any more timeouts. He's so if you if you were the lineman, if you were the snapper, if you were the holder, if you were the kicker, it's all the team effort here. 46 yards. You're not going to get stopped again. If you get the block up there, boom. You win and go home 34-31. Doug, here's something to think about. If the bad, if it is a bad snap, if you're if you're the holder right now, Haran, just kneel on the ball and go to overtime. Don't take any chances and gamble because you're going to see those two seconds tick off. Yeah, that's a good call, Kevin. You don't want to take a chance. So Sacred Heart out of timeouts. Again, Burdick lining up. His dream has always been to have a game-winning kick 46 yards away. This place will go crazy if he makes it. Good snap, good hold. The kick sails to the goal post to our left, and it is God! God! Dreams do come true! John Burdick, you're going to Williamsport. Forget Orlando. You're going to where all the dreams happen at the Little League World Series, and now at Bucknell University's Christy Mathewson Memorial Stadium. Burdick get swarmed a career-long 46-yard field goal and the bison win on the final play 34 to 31 pandemonium reigns at christie kevin doug he had it with room to spare that was probably good from about 53 Unbelievable. Burdick had always dreamed of that. And he hit it smack down the center. I mean, you can't kick a more perfectly centered kick than that one was. And Sacred Heart took a timeout when they had blocked what could have been the game-winning kick. Yeah, that's going to be one of those you're going you're gonna to wish you had uh, changed your mind on. So, John Burdick and the rest of the Bison. Exchange handshakes as Bucknell's Burdick hits it from 46, and you see his reaction on the Patriot League Network. He knew it immediately as he runs downfield, hands skyward, and he does a moving dab. <laughs> oh, that's so great to see. And on family weekend, Kevin, couldn't have been a better script by the Bison. I'm thinking we may have to have a conversation with him. <laughs> so Sacred Heart will lose its second straight game, and Bucknell will snap a two-game losing streak on the most incredible play here at Christie since another game-winning field goal back in 2014 against Lafayette in overtime. Boy, you don't get too many. I tell you, to be quite honest, Kevin, I think this is only the second game-winning kick I've ever called here at Bucknell in 18 years. You know, you, you depend so much on a kicker, and they only get so many chances. But he had two big field goals here tonight. The Bison will have Ray Bucknell across the way, and Kevin will have to kind of mosey on over to that huddle. But it's well, going to be extended time to celebrate. Doug, Doug, you you remember you, you were talking about, you know, big kicks. Last year, with all the injuries, Bucknell struggled in that part of the game. I don't think you would have seen Bucknell try this kick last year at this time. That is exactly.
exactly right. No, you're exactly right, Kevin. It had been so long. And remember, Burdick had a lot of injuries last year. He had hurt his abdomen. He went overseas. And, you know, Coach Joe Susan told us earlier in the preseason, he said, you know, he has changed his body type. And you can see the rippled muscles under his jersey as he's still being congratulated. Now he'll head over with the rest of the team for Ray Bartell. Hopefully you'll have a microphone that'll work. Seniors on the bench calling verdict. I think, I think they're missing a few. <laughs> this is one of the wildest nights and a huge win for Buckdale. 34-31 on a 46-yard game-winning kick by Burdick. Here's Ray Buckdale. Let's go, let's go. Ray Buckdale, Ray Buckdale, red for the orange and the blue. Ray, 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 Ray for the orange and the blue. Ray Buckdale, Ray Buckdale, Ray for the orange and the blue. In a game of momentum, the last shot was fired by a senior place kicker for Joe Susan and the orange and blue. John Burdick from 46 yards out with no time remaining in regulation and the Bison win it in a thriller tonight from Christie, 34 to 31. Here's the game winning kick on the Patriot League Network as Burdick, as Kevin had mentioned, had room to spare and he had a great snap by Adams, great hold by Haran and Burdick Tells you what happens there with a, well, I tell you what, he could run a, a hundred yards in about 12 seconds. Even some students helped to, to greet John Burdick at the end, but the Bison win it. The final score here from Christy Mathewson, Memorial Stadium in Lewisburg. It was the Bucknell Bison 34 and the Sacred Heart Pioneers 31.